That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. And we will leave you with a... I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! And thing sucks! That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. All right, all right. Let's see who's here. Can't tell yet. So, good evening to whoever's out there. I see that there's two viewers. Decided that uh, after smoking a a chuck roast might as well go live and see who's out there i should have done this yesterday at eight o'clock but got a little jammed up with the weather today the weather was a lot nicer so i went out there and got the uh the smoker going what's going on hojo guess i should find out where the link is and drop it in in case anybody wants to join in <clears throat> I'm sure it's on here someplace so, like I was saying, I got the new Camp Chef Pro, and I decided that um, I wanted to fire it up, make a video on it, have some material to be able to share. So, I started at about 12 o'clock this afternoon with a prime chuck roast that I picked up from a local butcher shop by me. Did a dry rub on it and threw it on the all-new Camp Chef XXL Pro and cooked that thing till about 6 30 p.m tonight so i did a, a hot and fast cook rather than a low and slow cooked it at about 300 degrees got it to 180 then i pulled it put some wagyu beef tallow on it wrapped it up in butcher paper threw it back on and uh, finished it at 202 degrees and my hope was to hold it at 150 for a little while but taste tested number two needed to get to a soccer game and Mama Meat Stick had to drive them. So it was a rush to get the food out. And uh, we also put some some grilled corn out there. So what's going on, Hojo? Got to figure out how I drop the, the link in so that other people can join us as well. Let's talk sausage. Have you ever used, let's, let's see how I get your message on there. There we go. Let's talk sausage. Have you ever used bull flour as a binder? Been reading up, and that's what the places in Lockhart use with their German style sausage. So what is bull flour? That's a great question. Is that a brand or is it a milk byproduct? I guess if, if it was a milk byproduct, it would be from the heifer which would be the female uh, type of steer, would be from the cow. But if it's from the bull, uh, that's bull semen. That might be exactly what they're using because there's only two type of things that you find in Texas. And um, I haven't seen too many people with horns on their head. So it means that there's something else. Let's look up what the bull flower is. Now you got me thinking. Bull flower. Binder. Let's see what that is. Fine ground corn, wheat, rye, oats, and rice, especially treated and processed to be used as a binding agent. So that is the bull binder. And it comes from a company called the Spokane Spice Company or Mitch Lich. Here it is. I'm going to drop that right in. So no, I haven't used this, but does sound like something that would be interesting. So I'll drop that in right there. And let's see. Am I able to show that? There you go. And now we all know. It would be fun is if I could figure out where the live link is so that I can get other people to join in. Probably not going to be that lucky. Nope. I didn't think so.
So one of the things I was looking forward to cooking was to do some jerk chicken. I, um, by me yesterday, I was able to pick up turkey and chicken drumsticks really cheap right after the July 4th holiday. Uh, it was actually buy one, get two free. So I ended up with 15 chicken drumsticks and six turkey drumsticks. So I wanted to do something with those. see what he got here from what i read that's what give german style sausage from central toxis that grainy texture grainy texture that's interesting and what's unique about the the grainy texture verse say when you take your meat you grind it um you throw in some extra fat and it's almost like it's got the the gristle in there is that the type of texture you're talking about like that grisly texture or is it more grainy by way of like a sandy type of feel. There we go, I found it. That's what I was looking for here. If you wanna join in and we can talk one-on-one, -on -one, more than welcome. There's the link. And I'm going to have a sip of this ice cold, refreshing Miller latte. Yeah, more sandy makes sense. And definitely a coarse grind. Um, it's interesting. I actually had a conversation with somebody earlier today who told me we're doing Oktoberfest this year. Instead of at my house, we're going back to his house to do it. So I'm going to be making quite a bit of different type of worst sausages, brat, bratwurst, weisswurst, knockwurst, which are pretty much hot dogs that are much thicker. Uh, we'll do different type of uh, fried chicken cutlets and pork cutlets, schnitzel, veal schnitzel as well. Um, and probably the, um, I think it's called, a, not a Jaegerwurst, uh, like a Jaeger something or other, which is pretty much a meat stick. It's like snack stick that's more dried out and of course we'll also do a german type of kielbasa um, that we'll cook up with sauerkraut that's loaded up with um, with caraway seeds and brown sugar it's almost so sweet that you need to go to the dentist afterwards because your teeth are rotting we'll send you the knockoff recipe for smitty that's his krauser's sausage and locker it sounds great I've heard great stuff about uh, Krauser and their smokehouse. You have a good evening as well. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Let's see who else we got on here. I'll drop the link in in case anybody wants to join live. The only messages I think I can see is what's coming across from Facebook. I'm not sure if I'm going to see the Twitter messages. Um, I'm sorry, I, th I think it's the stuff coming across from YouTube, not Facebook, but it, we're broadcasting live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at the same time. And if I can figure out how to get this on Rumble, we'll do that as well. So who else do we have with us tonight? Let's see. So it says here, I got four people on YouTube. And one person on Facebook. And I think it's probably myself. Oh, there we go. Look at this. Randy's in the house. I hope he's wearing nothing but his overalls. Randy, this one's for you. I put this name down about jerking your chicken because you're the first person that came to mind as far as those type of comments. So I made sure that as I was thinking like a sick individual like you, I would put that in. Um, the only thing I'm missing is my overalls. And an Uncle Dickie show. I'm hoping you're going to join me live. Because it gets a little odd talking to myself. Unless you're busy in the garage or you're driving back from work in hazmat someplace. I do expect you to get on here. Hojo and I were having a, a talk 
earlier tonight, I was making a uh, a roast. I was making a, oh man, what do you call that thing? A chuck roast. And uh, I had to do it hot and fast to get it out there. So now I'm working on all these chicken drumsticks that I picked up and turkey drumsticks and trying to figure out what to do with them. Because I don't want to just do dry rub. Some of this stuff, after watching Simon's video, where um, he did a, uh, I'm going to call it a, a Mexican type of seasoning. Um, it motivated me to come up with some type of ethnic flair. And um, if I could get a, that type of recipe from him, I definitely tried that out with the chicken thighs. But I'm thinking that with these chicken drumsticks, I'm going to load them up with a jerk flavor and uh, we'll we'll jerk our chicken together. Maybe we could do something. Chinese, something with ginger and scallion. I'm not really sure, or black bean sauce, but I have all this chicken. I've got 15 drumsticks to do something with, so I might as well cook them three different ways. Uh, there's also that PS seasoning that I've seen people like Trumpet Master 77 using, where it's got a pickle flavor, uh, it's got a buffalo wing flavor. They're actually all made for, for making wings. I don't think that there's any shame in my game by using them on chicken drumsticks. But I want to hear from others. I'd love to get some other people on here and talk to some people live. Get a little back and forth action. I'm sure at some point tonight, I'm going to have to pass the microphone off. It's Thursday night. Somebody's got a live stream someplace, and this was very impromptu. So who do we got? What's going on? And what did others make for the fourth? Were we making beef ribs? Were we making pork ribs, spare ribs, baby backs? Were people making briskets, chicken, hot dogs, hamburgers? I can't say that my 4th of July was very eventful. Had a little bit of a stomach bug. I ended up with the best seat in the house, right here in the house, right on the toilet. Best seat you could ask for. Oh, look at this. We have Mr. Al Lunacy himself. Big fan. Al, I saw earlier this evening, or earlier this afternoon, rather, found a special, I believe it's on Amazon, on an electric pizza oven, pretty similar to the one that he had shown in a short video just last week, but he got it at a better price. We might have a new throwdown. Al is very good at bargain shopping for items and then getting people together to all do a throwdown. So the next throwdown following the old Smokey might be an electric pizza oven throwdown. I'm hoping so. What do you say, Al? Are we going to get a pizza throwdown? Are we going to get different varieties of, of pizza, a Texas pie, a New York pie, a Pennsylvania pie, a Minnesota pie? I might have to come in there with the one that I told you about, the dessert pie, which has the Nutella on it, along with the marshmallow fluff and uh, peanut butter cups. And that goes right into, I guess in this case, the electric oven rather than the wood-fired oven that we have out back. In fact, that's what we did yesterday. Taste tester number two was pushing and pushing and pushing that we would make pizzas at home. So that's exactly what we did. We needed our dough, put our own sauce on, our own cheese and different toppings. And last night was pizza night here at the house. Uh, we went, went even went as far as making a square pile. A square pie, which uh, some of you might know is called Sicilian pie. If it was thicker crust, it would be a Chicago pie. And the kids absolutely loved it. Taste tester number one and taste tester number number two had sauce and cheese all over their face, all over the floor. Uh, it was a complete mess in my man cave of a of a little kitchen bar area on the side. Pizza nights are always epic. And it's a great way of getting the kids and the family together. 
my son loves when his friends come over and each one of them take turns making their own pizzas and then putting them outside um, to to cook. Uh, we just have to make sure nobody burns it themselves. And with kids that are in the seven year old range that they're not touching the say like the metal rims on any of the jars or cans that we open up and cutting themselves because they want to get in there with the spoon. They're very active. They want to do everything on their own. Um, so one of the, the things that, that the kids have learned is after they're done making their pizza on a wooden peel, they have to be able to get it off the wooden peel and get it into the oven without the pizza crumbling up or the toppings going all over the place on the inside of the oven. But we're getting there one step at a time with these kids. So who's going to join me live for just a little bit? It's interesting when I talk to the camera and I'm shooting a video. It's another thing when I have an audience and there's difficult audience reaction because I'm not engaging with someone where I can see them and get that active feedback besides with the typing and the texting. We could all do shots in honor of Luis, Mr. Trumpet Master 77, who sent people shot glasses, we can all have a little tequila uh, and celebrate his son graduating from the Army. You're at work? Otherwise, you would. Well, what better place to drink than at work? It's what helps to pass the time. The only problem with drinking at work is spilling your drink on your computer. You can always take a water bottle and fill it with vodka or fill it with tequila. Clear liquors work very nice. What were you doing that you never made it to work in the morning? You had a, a lengthy hangover. Still going from the 4th of July? Or um, were you on some other type of bender? And now I'm, I'm kind of curious, what are we going to do for the next throwdown? Everybody did such a great job with their old Smokey. We all went out, bought one, shot videos. I was the latest to get mine out because, in all honesty, I'm not all that good at, uh, at putting these videos together in post-production. That's why I got somebody else involved to help me out. Whether I was using Final Cut Pro or I was using, um, I think it was Adobe Premiere, it was a bit of a challenge. We rained out at two today. Oh, it was raining, so you never made it in. Yeah, you can't work in the rain. God forbid it, you got wet going outside. That's true. You must have what we call the uh, the wicked witch syndrome, where you start to melt if you get wet. Just be careful no one drops a house on you. I know that you work with, uh, I believe you said hazmat type of stuff. So I'm sure whatever gases or chemicals or biologicals you're working with are susceptible to the rain. So safety first. So who else do we have that can check in? I'm dropping this link in. Hoping somebody is available to log in through their phone or if they're sitting there in front of a computer, they can join in with me. You know, one of the things, it's interesting, that new pellet smoker I got, I was told when I watched some of these YouTube videos that uh, it should take about an hour to an hour and a half to put the smoker together. But the instructions that came in weren't exactly, let's just say, the easiest to understand. And even somebody with an engineering degree would have found it challenging. Right on 
the first page, the second diagram, there was an absence of words or pictures to tell you what parts go in. So by the time you get to step 20 and you've put the screws in and assembled it, everything together, suddenly you find that you have these extra pieces. And the only way to get them in is to take everything apart again um, and get it back to step two or step three just to be able to fit in these, these missing pieces. One of them was, it looked like a, almost like a metal spatula that goes across the fire pot so that after the fire is out, all the pellet dust that's left, all the burnt pellets, you pull back on a rod and all that ash drops into a cup down below. Well, it wasn't until step 23 or so that I noticed I still had that in my hand and it hadn't been installed. So I had to go back with the screw gun, take everything apart, uh, get the pieces back in and put it together. And I'm still having some challenges where there's a, a fit screw that was stripped before I even got a handle on. I had asked Camp Chef to replace it and they sent me the wrong piece completely. They sent me the handle and the setup that goes on the door rather than the handle that fits into a, a threaded rod that's used in order to get the fire going on the pro smoke box. Let's see what we've got in here now. The chemical plant is shut down if there's lightning. D yep. Oh, Daddy Dutch is here. Chris from Let It Smoke Barbecue. What pellet smoker did you get? Well, I got the new Camp Chef XXL Pro, which was, uh, I got that about three weeks ago. I was really excited about it. Um, I still am excited about it. I used it about nine times so far. The, uh, the opportunity today presented itself now that the rain broke. So I went out, got a chuck roast from a local butcher shop. I wanted to, to support a local business. And uh, I started that cook. Well, I seasoned it about 12 by 1230. The smoker had come up to temperature at roughly 300 degrees. So I went ahead and put that on. And once it got to about 185 degrees, I pulled it, wrapped it with tallow uh, inside butcher paper, put it back on. And when it got to 202, I pulled it. My initial thought was to leave it on there and let it stay uh, at, at about 150 degrees. In fact, I dialed back using the app on my phone for the, the Camp Chef app. I dialed it back to 150 and the idea was to just leave it in there for another hour or so, maybe two hours, so that instead of having to put it into a warming box or put it into a cooler, I could do what I've seen a lot of other people do and keep it at that temperature at 150 just to, to hold it. However, as I saw the temperature continue to climb, and I also had to make sure that I fed the seven-year-old, Mr. Taste Tester number two, and mommy meat stick, so because she had to drive him to soccer tonight. It was important just to, to take it off. I did a, a hot and fast cook, slice it up, and um, I got everything on video. I'll be putting that video together, or rather, I'll be giving the video to somebody else so they can put it together, since I am not too good with post-production. And if all goes well, I'll have that video out next week. Looks like Simon's checking in. Got Batman checking in. Nice. So this was just something that was impromptu. Originally, I was planning upon doing this live stream yesterday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. But earlier in the week when I had heard that Smoke and Joe barbecue pit uh, does his live stream at more or less the same time, give or take uh, an hour. I didn't want to step on people's toes. I didn't know if anybody else was going on. So when I checked YouTube earlier and didn't see that anybody was scheduled for this evening, I decided why not? I'll jump on it 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central. That way, if somebody's coming on later tonight, um, I'm not stepping on their toes. And there's plenty of time to be able to get between whatever live stream I'm doing here and them later this evening. Barbecue Mike G. Chuck, the affordable brisket in California. I believe it was the affordable brisket here in northeastern Pennsylvania as well. 
uh, was about a four and a half pound piece of meat. And it cost me just under $20. I'm going to just call it $19.95. It was a great piece of meat. I did a little bit of trimming to it. So there'd be a little bit more aerodynamic. Um, the only thing I'm going to say is that it shrunk down quite a bit. And you'll see that in the video when that comes out next week. This week, the video is put together. I do plan upon putting the video out of the unboxing and build and burn in of that Camp Chef XXL Pro vertical smoker. Uh, lately, I've been able to put together some reels and some shorts, but the actual video is coming out. So as soon as it does, I'll let everybody know because I need the view hours. If I'm ever going to really start to move forward beyond people who are subscribers and they like, I need them to be able to get through the video. I look back, spoke to some people and got some, some uh, comments and feedback that my videos are just a little bit too long. Many of them are between 40 minutes to an hour and I need to do what others do and limit them to about eight minutes. If possible, put together some shorts um, break the, sh the uh, video up maybe even into three parts so that if it is 30 minutes in length, there's part one, two, and three, each one 10 minutes. Uh, that way I can get people to hang out a little bit longer. Let's see what we got here from Daddy Dutch. Chuck Rose here is four ninety nine a pound. Brisket is two ninety nine, and I'll get two cooks out of it. Huh. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I believe that the chuck roast did cost a bit more than the brisket. And someone had told me that Costco is no longer carrying prime pack of briskets. I don't know if that's true or not, or if that was just regionally, wherever they were located, that their Costco is no longer uh, stocking these. The closest Costco to me is an hour away. There's one in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and the other one is in Rockaway, New Jersey. So i guess that gives me two opportunities in two different states to find out whether or not uh, the prime pack of briskets are still available or if that's something that's regional to that individual who said that it's no longer at their Costco. Wow, $7 or more a pound. That is crazy. This is something I've said time and time again. If you're able to get the entire pack of brisket, especially for two fifty a pound to three dollars a pound, you're better off doing all of the the, the butchering on your own, and um, that way you you're I, I guess in in this case uh, you get two cooks out of it because you're able to separate the flat from the point. Not to mention that the trimmings that you get are useful. So if you're having your retail butcher do all the work for you. You're missing out on the suet fat, which is great for rendering down. It's probably the sweetest fat on the cattle uh, or on the steer rather. So rendering that fat down and using it as your own tallow, you're missing all the trim that you're able to use to grind down into chopped meat or uh, useful for making beef sausage or even combining your beef and your pork sausage to make other type of hot links. It's kind of a waste. I don't know. I'm 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 always about trying to find different ways to be frugal, not cheap. And in being frugal, having all the the other trimmings and pieces that are that are left over, especially from meat that I'm able to get on a hook, um, even a bone in brisket, which, by the way, is something I'm looking to do. I know the bearded butchers just recently did a a bone in brisket, but with um, Having a meat purveyor in the Hunts Point Market in the Bronx, I'm able to get meat directly off the hook, and it'll be bone in. So I'm considering bringing that back here, trimming it up a little bit, and then leaving it on the bone to smoke, seeing how that comes out. I think just about any meat that you make on the bone gets that better flavor to it, which is why your tomahawk steaks and your porterhouses are so popular and why a bone-in filet or even a, a bone-in New York strip costs you that much more than a boneless. Um, or again, another example is when you're looking at your dino ribs, 
the dino ribs for the most part is, is that bone. Um, I think that people like smoking Joe or, uh, uh, Leroy and Lewis would agree or Black's Barbecue would agree when they're they're making their dino ribs, they're, they're making that brisket on a stick that the reason why it costs so much, $30 a pound or more when they sell it, is because of the cost of that bone. Yep, Daddy Dutch is right. Save all that beef trim for tallow and blend it with pork trim to make sausage barely any waste that's the smart move that is an educated consumer right there that's somebody that understands how to get multiple meals multiple items out of one piece of meat bone and brisket takes forever <laughs> i did one on a short took 18 hours well how many shorts did you get out of that one if it took 18 hours to cook? Amazing. You've got quite a few cookers there in your barbecue shed. You've got uh you've got the offset, you've got the the camp chef. Um what else do you have back there? Oh, now you definitely have an old smoky. I don't know what else, but you you have quite a few cookers in your your barbecue shed. See if anybody wants to join in. How do I pin this to the top? Let's see, does that do it? Maybe that pins it. I don't know. I'm still learning how to use this. I need someone like Simon. Simon, who 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 is a master of StreamYard, who knows how to run all the games, who knows how to run a chat and at the same time conduct a live stream where he, he's he can hold the conversation. I, I I take the the kind of the the standpoint of someone like uh, like a Steve Jobs where you, you get the right people who know everything in order to be successful. You never go out there and try to do everything on your own. And uh, I, need a, I need Simon or someone like a Simon who knows how to run all these different functions at the same time. Or maybe take a training class. But, Al, I understand it's going to take quite a bit quite a bit of time to to do that brisket but i gotta tell you now that i i'm starting to get into this set it and forget it um i forgot what what people are calling this pellet smoker this uh easy bake oven type of cook why not who cares if it takes 18 hours you know put a put a dry rub on put a dry brine on let it sit overnight put it on the smoker I'm able to go to work uh, or, or go to sleep, whatever I got to do. And the computer system on there, the PID computer, will maintain the temperature nice and steady. I noticed that with a 30-pound hopper that I have on that camp chef, I'm really not using that many pellets. I haven't had a need to refill it yet, and I've done, today made nine cooks. So each cook, say it's averaging six hours. So that 54 hours that I've, I've cooked and the hopper is still doing pretty well. There hasn't been a need to put any new pellets in. But I'm kind of, I'm curious to know about the flavor. The only downside is I don't have enough eaters here at the house. So it's going to end up going to the firehouse uh, which isn't a problem feeding those guys, but it does get expensive after a while. I can't hand over the invoices each time I'm cooking and expect them to pick up the tab. So it's, uh, I guess, a lot of philanthropy for my brothers in the firehouse. And up here, a lot of people use their crock pots. Uh, 
They have other types of, uh, of, of electric smokers. I've seen one individual who's got one that looks like a hockey puck that goes in. And that hockey puck, it's a wood hockey puck that, that or rather like stamped down wood, probably wood shavings. And that's what generates the smoke. I think it's made by Masterbuilt, but don't quote me on that. So I guess if there's nobody that's going to join me, I'll give it a rest. I don't know how entertaining I am, but uh, it'd be interesting if somebody wants to join in. Just jump in. Give me somebody to talk to. That way we can throw some ideas back and forth instead of just talking about um, making jerk chicken. Because right now it's like jerking the chicken. Uh, I can have a little back and forth interaction with someone. All right. One more time. I'm dropping in the link. Let's see if there's somebody in here who's willing to step up to the microphone. It's open mic night. I'll give her one more minute. I've already been going 37 minutes. That's a lot of talking for one person. Anyone? Bueller? 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 Guggen? That was a great video that uh, that I saw from you where you're coming up the hill in that H1 shooting fireworks off. Amazing, very patriotic. God bless America. Also, nice Hummer H1. That's a real Hummer. That's not like that H2, H3 Chevy. That's the real AMG toy. No, no, no. Thank you, sir. I would love to take a ride in that toy. That's the real deal. All that thing needs is a is, is a gun on the top or a flamethrower to go with the, the fireworks that you're shooting off. Here we go. Very nice. I'm not going to leave you hanging, buddy. Oh, my goodness. I appreciate it. With the Fire Cubs banner behind your head. Now I feel like I'm sponsored. Thank you. And my and my towels. I see the towels as well. Great but, stuff. Uh, it's been a it's been a while. Um, I've got some issues I'm trying to work through personally, so I've kind of just faded away. I guess I want to say. What do you mean by that? What type of issues are you working through? Personal. Well, clearly. Hopefully they're nothing that's too troubling. No. Um, I've talked to a couple people, but, you know, it's just something I got to do. Is it, a, is, is it a personal barbecue issue? Is it that you're not able to get the meat that you need? Is Anthony not sending enough fire cups to you? There you go. I might be able to hear you now. Oh, that's perfect. I was saying, is the personal issue that yeah, Anthony it, it, not has, it, enough has fire to, cups? it has to deal with uh, some things on YouTube. Haters going to hate, players going to play. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. You know, yeah. um, but yeah, I got, uh, well, really I got five towels. I got four hanging. Um, Randy's is over here. 2106 is there. Simon and, uh, 
I forget who I got hanging up top. Well, I'll have some towels coming in pretty and, soon. And then, of course, ta-da! What is that? What do you got there? My Niners. Niners. There it is. You Niners. got your own towel. Got my own towel. And did you get those made by Lance? Yes, sir. Perfect. Lance has been working with me to get some towels together, some hats. I think we're going to do some koozies. I got to see what else he's got available. Um, Lance has been outstanding. I know I've got a lot of different colors and things that are that are in my design. Right. So he uh, he had to work with me on getting different threads and stitching and materials in order to compile everything together so that I can have some materials and do giveaways with people. That's right. That's right, Randy. Uh, I forgot. I have George's. So George and uh, Simon are up top. But uh, I'm slowly collecting a couple. Um, Hammy, MMA. She put a song out about all of us. And that was very good. I was glad to hear it. Nice. And and what was the uh what was the song? It was about hanging out on YouTube or it, it's, barbecuing. It's about the group of barbecuers, you know, we have here. You know, Simon, Randy, myself, Quint, Judge, you know, everybody. What is TDO? I see that jump up every now and then with flames next to it. That's a little group that uh, Randy and a few started. It's uh, that damn offset. That damn offset. I had no idea what it stood for. Yeah. Um, everybody in the chat, hello. How you been? Yeah, she put me in there. I was in, I was close to the beginning of the song. But uh Yeah, I uh I I I show my love with everybody that does lives. You know, I give them their view and uh like but I don't intertwined so to speak hmm. and the towels that you have is is that from the giveaways or are you yeah I, uh, people? I i've won those oh very nice there there's quite a few more like um you see on the bottom there where i got the two hanging see tiger he's got four holes in his flag. So I've got the top two holding the flag up, and then the bottom two I've got towels up to. I see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another rod underneath so that way I can put the towels across that rod because I plan on getting a lot more. Well, I owe you one. Once uh, once my stuff starts coming in, once we have production going and I uh, have giveaways, hopefully you'll you'll win one or we can trade. That's right. That's right. Like I, I say, uh, Smoking Joe's I've seen in uh, Lance's last video. I want. I would love to get one of those. Uh, I think Anthony's got one out. Um, there's quite a few. That's right, Guggen. Got to, got to, got to, got to catch. Get them all. You know that. Uh, 
that one benefit we were doing, I believe. For the the kid that uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately for, for, lost for his that life. Fa for that family that had that farm accident. Yes. I uh I sent Hammy and uh I forget who the other person was. Uh, starter pack that uh, we seem to have dreamed up to where you get four towns, your choice. So, uh, so like I say, if I if I go and send somebody a starter pack, I'll send Lance the money, but. You would have, say I'm sending four pack to you. You would have the choice of what four towels you want. Mm -hmm. So that gives you the option. And of course, the, uh, the two that I sent towels to, they took one of mine. Thank you very much. Yeah, Randy, uh, for a little while, I'll be in and out, but uh, how in the world do you have counter space for all those neat, your maker equipment? Uh, great question. Uh, I actually had a conversation with my wife after my my son had a friend come over the house and a lot of the items had to be put away. Obviously all the knives had to go away because you can't have seven year old kids getting access. Right, to the knives. Right. And the other equipment from meat is quite heavy. So Ooh, yeah, that had to come down. So they didn't knock it down. Um, and then stuff that I put on the floor, say like the 10 inch meat slicer that has a blade on it that had to go away. So we had a conversation. I want to go get, metro racks and set them up in a corner someplace so that all those items can get organized. Yeah. In fact, one of the things that I saw with Smoke and Joe, right behind him, whenever he does his his live stream, yeah, he's got all see. his meat equipment behind him. Yeah. So I don't have the accessibility to do that. This is my office here, and I'm not right. going to put that in here. Well, this is my TV computer room, and uh, it's a mess, but you know, my office is no better. Oh, it's this way. All, all my favorites <laughs> over here. I got to get used to it. It's a good thing I'm not a, 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 on like the weather channel or something trying to point to where the storm system is. Oh, I all, know. I, all I this hate, over I here hate that myself. Here. Yeah. Only thing I could do correct is this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that this this one's easy, you know, pointing like that. But then to point to the side, I it's over there. So yeah, all that's got to, everything here needs to be cleaned up. Um, in my office, I know where everything is. However, uh, I've had people come in and they put something down and they can't find it again. Or they think that they're going to do me a favor and they're going to reorganize my files yeah. because to them it's too messy. I'm not going to say who it is. It might be my wife. It definitely is my wife. Uh, and then I can't <laughs> find the stuff again. I'm not going to mention any names, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a little warm in the house, so I had to hurry up and throw a shirt on so I could join you before you ran off. It's It, it gets to be um, a little odd when you're talking to yourself and you're waiting for live reaction I so know. even you know live reaction coming in as a text it takes a while for someone to type what they want to type and then there's that awkward pause is that awkward break what do you do right you know and and in anything whether it's a you know tv movies whatever it is even if i'm shooting a, a video you can't have dead air space uh you know you even learn that with the radio stations having dead air is a problem so you're forced to keep talking and for, you know, to be politically correct, bullshitting about something in order to, to not have that, that odd 
dead airspace and wait for someone to type something into the chat. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what would be worse if I had a hundred people in here and everyone's typing to me at the same time, or if I have less people and the opportunity to be able to read their message and answer it in a decent amount of time. Right. Right. But I, you know, again, I appreciate you coming on because we can now have this, this live yeah, back and forth. Yeah. Well, see, when I did some lives, I tried to get my oldest son, one, that he can help me if I have any problems, and two, I have a co-host. That helps. Know. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if you plan on doing any lives in the future, maybe you could think of that. And maybe get somebody to co-host with you. Well, I had thought that I had established a date and time, Wednesdays right. at 8 p.m. But um, one of the things that came up earlier in the week was that someone mentioned to me that maybe Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central wasn't the best time since other people have their set time slots. Uh, but the time went yet went came and went yesterday. Nobody took that time slot, so I sort of missed out on it. Yeah. Tonight, I just I threw a little caution I mean, to the I wind. I mean, Joe, I guess he's kind of busy because he's been kind of hit and miss the past month. I think he's only done maybe one live in the past month. Right. Well, he he was just recently either interviewed or had an article written up um, in, was that Texas Weekly, Texas Monthly Barbecue? Really? So I'm sure he's been busy with the with the uh, the media. Oh, yeah. Uh, they do the top 50, correct? They do the top 50. And I'm, uh, I'm sure that, you know, the top 50 that comes out every couple of years, they still need material to be able to, to, to fill the publishers. The editors still need material. So they most likely do weekly or monthly pieces. And it sounds like he was selected for one of them that came out, ordered food from him, and then wrote up an article. Right. So that's so, got to be bringing new business to his his uh, his mobile operation. Yes. Uh, Simon's saying Monday at 7 Central is now open. So that would be 8 o'clock for us. Oh, you're on the East Coast as well? Yes, sir. I'm in Maryland. Oh, that's great. I'm, uh, well, obviously, you know, I'm right here in Pennsylvania, so we're not all that far from each other. I'm in yeah. the Pocono. You and I Mountains. talked about this before. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's, I can't remember what I had for, for breakfast three days I'm ago. I'm 66 years old and I can remember quite a bit. I, I, I have temporary dementia sometimes. It sets in. There's too much that goes on in my head all day. The, the hamster never gets off the wheel. My mom used to play that game, and I look at her, and I said, yeah, right. It's only selective memory or selective hearing. That's all it is. Let's see here. So Randy says he'll be back on his spot at 8 again. Um, I was going to politely ask him if I could have taken Monday at 8 o'clock when, you know, being that he's had right, a change in right. some of the stuff going on at work, but I don't want to step on people's toes there either. Um, well, see, that's the bad thing about me. I sit here and I watch so and so and so and so, and I say, "Okay, they're this day, there's this day, there's this day," and and that day's open. Next right. day's nobody's on it, and then Friday, you know, somebody's there. And I mean, that's just like Grill Sergeant. He used to do Fridays at nine all the time. Now, him. And uh, Rick are kind of collabing together on lives. And I think the last last week's live, Rick said that they would be doing it for a few more weeks together. So you got Anthony and uh, or Andrew and uh, Rick in one live. True. Well, I think I'm going to stick with um, either the the 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central time slot on a Wednesday or a Thursday, or see if there's somebody from time to time I can collab with and move around that way. Right. 
it, it's it's fair for everybody, you know. Uh, I think I think Thursday, since really nobody, I haven't seen anybody on Thursday in a while. I mean, uh, go for it. Yeah, Thursday would work. Thursday would work fine. Friday, Saturday, Saturday's definitely out. Sunday is is definitely out. Uh, you know, Simon's got his. Randy has his. Um, yeah. I think Tuesday nights used to be Al. Um, well, that, well like see, to... Lance Lance does uh, his on Sunday night. True. Yep. Well, really, yeah. Lance, he surprised the heck out of me. He, he pops up anytime. You know, I'll be ready for his live at night, and he'll be started at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow. You know, Lance, he only lives about an hour from me. CJ goes on Thursday, but it's not till later. Is CJ the <laughs> gentleman that's in California, Randy? Is that cooking with CJ or somebody else? I believe that's the same one that did the interview last week with Lance. I think so. Oh, no, that was SJ, not CJ. Yeah, that was Sal. Right, that was Sal. And that was on Wednesday. Okay, Mom Mama, and Papa Mama, Joe. Yeah, CJ. Okay. Okay, and and uh, he's going to be doing something. I saw there was something on there about he's going to be doing a Wagyu brisket that he picked up from the HEB. So I'm interested in seeing that. Now, I, I everybody talks about Kroger and getting their meat and stuff, and. Uh, I Googled Kroger on the computer and they're supposed to be one close to me. But every time I go to location, it takes me to the Howard's, Howard's Teeter. I don't know if they're in collabs or what. You're talking Kroger, the supermarket? Yeah. Yep. I don't know. We don't have one up here. Because uh, they're supposed to have some decent meat. Because everybody talks about Walmart, and my Walmart sucks. To be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, the the uh I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about picking up meat from Walmart. And coming from New York City and the accessibility of going directly to the to the meat. Oh, market, okay, okay, AJ, thank you. That kind of changes my outlook on certain types of, of right. uh, cuts of beef. And work that I can do here at home to fabricate my own. I found out today when I went to a local butcher. New to me, uh, he's been here for two years. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. I met the owner. And he told me any custom fabricated meat that I'm looking for, he can do that for me. Right. So what I'm really interested in is getting a, a beef belly and, and smoking that. And I also want to get the... Um, the pork belly that has the rib meat on it. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Bo uh, I, I, it's fine if the the uh, if the bones are still in it, and I choose to debone it, I can do that, or uh, I can take it bone in and then slice it up and make it into a bacon rib, just like I've seen some of the larger YouTubers do lately. Right. Now, see, I uh, I've got up in the freezer. I went and did a. Uh pork belly cured it you know took it out smoked it and it was like six and a half pounder of course i always get mine at about five pound but they hit and miss right i love it when they miss and i get more um my barbecue videos i did do a uh beef belly bacon I didn't like it that much. My son, he loved it. And uh, see, basically, that's what I'm doing is I'm making bacon for him because he used to take these breakfast bowls to work. 
So I would, you know, make the bacon for him. But to be honest with you, buying the belly and seasonings and pellets and electric and all, in a way, he'd be better off just going to the darn grocery store. And you're saying buy the the smoked bacon already, already done yeah, up for yeah, you? Yeah, buy, buy packaged bacon at the grocery store. Well, there's there's other things that you can do with it besides smoking oh, yeah. and making it into bacon. Um, I mean, I've seen the, the, the big you can thing do the burnt now, ends. Yeah, big. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The big thing I'm seeing now is people taking and making burnt ends. Right. Googan, it's coming. Gumbo number five. What is what is what is he talking about? I've uh, I've done like four gumbo videos, and Randy keeps kidding me about uh, he's been wanting to do gumbo, but yet I've got the market sewed up with all the gumbo that I've done and put out. So. Uh, We uh we've been kind of joking around and uh I uh I told him that I was going to have uh Mumbo not number 5 in the background change Mumbo to Gumbo right you know but uh that'll be a big copyright copyright Oh yes, sir. <laughs> Uncle Larry Uncle Larry outdid himself last time. I've got like four jars of gumbo and three jars of stew and a few left. I ordered two and got four. So what's the most interesting thing? that you you've cooked what's the most exotic food you've you've uh you've cooked i've done brisket i've only done one brisket a couple years ago and surprisingly being my first brisket it turned out oh my god it yeah it was good that's that's I've, impressive. I've done uh, ribs, pork belly, and yeah, pork belly, beef belly, pork butt, pull for pulled pork. Uh, that's about it. I want to get into more, like the dinosaur rib, right? And. Uh, There's quite a few meats. Uh, my mom, she has like a 30-year-plus old Weber kettle I've been kind of uh, restoring. I just got some new handles for it. So I want to do some cooking on that, some steaks, you know, stuff like that. See, Guggen picked up on what I was talking about as far as exotic. So he he's saying he wants to cook some kangaroo or ostrich. Um, oh, well, I, I I haven't done any weird wild animal, no. Or or even you know, if we're dealing with with beef, you've got brains, yeah. you've got the sweetbreads. I got you even have cheeks. Rocky Mountain oysters. You've got testicles to smoke. Beef smoke cheeks. balls. Beef cheeks is about beef the cheeks. only wildest out of the. Uh, protein category of beef you know other than brisket and uh the belly i haven't done the cheeks yet but uh i've got four pack of beautiful cheeks down that i got from porter roads and uh Matter of fact, I got a uh, rack of spare. I've got a five pound 
pork butt. Uh, what else do I got down there? I've got a couple other things, you know, I need to cook up. But also, like, I need to order some more uh, turkey breast. And I want to go and get some chicken and spatchcock it. Probably cut it in half and do half chickens. Um, matter of fact, I got a rotisserie from the grocery store and spatchcocked it. And believe me, it was a hell of a sight easier to cut up then than it was uh, with the backbone in. Right. Uh, my mom has made cow tongue. I love that. Uh, haven't had any sheep, goat, lamb. You've never had that? Nope. Oh, no lamb chops. I've always wanted to try lamb. A uh, friend of mine I went to school with, his mom was making lamb for dinner and asked if I wanted to stay and I said heck yeah but then uh, my dad said something about we were going to the races that night so that was uh, you know that blew my chance to have some lamb and uh, you know there, there, there's different things I've, I I want to go and cook some bison. That sounds very interesting. That's supposed to be lean. It's delicious. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of money, but uh, I would at least like to cook some type of wagyu. Just just one time. Well, yeah. maybe we could do a, uh, you know, as, as the channels grow, maybe we could do a Wagyu giveaway, especially if we come across a meat sponsor. Um, and that would probably be the best way to, to get, say, like a New York strip or a, uh, yeah. a ribeye. Yeah, yeah that, see, you know, but that that's when I have to get my grill up and running to do it on that, do a two-zone cook. You know, um, I have pickled onions. Matter of fact, I got a jar in the fridge now. Uh, I've been dabbing into making my own sauces. I've got a uh, regular, uh, sweet, sweet and spicy. And uh, I did a uh, rack of St. Louis in the crock pot last night. And uh, I used my own sauce, and my God, it was delicious. Well, I've, uh, I've made, I've traveled the world and had some pretty exotic food. I was in Cambodia. We had birds, like little swallows. You've heard of swallow nest soup. So we ate the little birds. We had bats. I had what they called Toto. Can you guess what Toto was? Well, it's not Dorothy's dog. Oh, it is. That's the dog. That's exactly what that was. We had the dog. Um, I've had many different types of tripe, whether it be the honeycomb tripe or other types of lining from the stomach. Right. It had just about everything stuffed into an intestine, including haggis, which uh, I'm sure, as you know, comes out of Ireland, um, and a lot of different types of, of game meats. I'm reading here through the chat, and Adventures with Outdoor Eagles talking about eating caribou and elk, and right. that is delicious. So if you're looking for a protein like bison, because you say that it's lean, you're going to find the same thing with your caribou and your elk, same right. thing with your venison, your red stag. And what's nice is, you know, you're, you're, you're talking about using online or, or, or retail marketplace um, to be able to get meats. 
there are vendors online that farm raise these game meats and you're able to to purchase it far less than what you're going to pay for wagyu or for the real oh, yeah, Japanese yeah. A5 kobe now there's there's a company in the u.s has started breeding wagyu um i can't think of their name right now they're out midwest and uh i've checked their site and all and to be honest with you um they were out of a lot of stuff so apparently it must be good and priced to where people are buying the heck out of it yes and nothing goes to waste everything on that animal from the the pelts that are obviously used for making different type of, of, of clothing items right. to the visceral organ meats to um, all the, the byproducts that I, I like to call value added products. Like um, for example, <laughs> fat works right now uh, is selling the venison fat as a value added product that is rendered down as tallow. Same thing with the, the fat works is I, I got a, an email about this. They're also selling the elk tallow. So right. when you're looking online at some of these vendors, every part of that animal, when they farm raise it is being sold in one way or another. And it's, it, they're, they're delicious quality. One of the things I'll caution you about is with game meats, they tend to be very lean. So yeah. if your plan is ever to grind them up and make them into a burger, you're definitely going to want to add some other type of, of animal protein in, including pork fat, just so that when you're grilling this, it doesn't come out too dry. I got bags of fat. Perfect. In the freezer. So I saw... Uh... I forget who it was. What he did was he took his fat, ground it up, so that way it would render a lot easier to make tallow. So I went and bought me a little cheap grinder because that's what I... You figure if you can grind all those bags of fat up, put it in one big bag, You've opened a heck of a lot of space up in your freezer. Yes. Yep. Because uh, it, it makes it much easier when you put them into the yeah uh, the, the vacuum packs to be able to, to keep them as flat as possible. Now I had uh, I had some stew that I made left over from Uncle Larry stewing a few. And I wound up tonight just putting it in the uh, vacuum bags and uh, put them in the freezer. So I've got two half full bags of uh, stew. So I can bring them out, let them thaw out and heat it up or put it in a boiling pot and kind of like sous vide it and let it heat up. But uh, I've seen a lot of lot of videos. You got to talking about the intestines where they wrap the meat in the intestine. Yes. And it and it's like a netting. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So and as you know, your natural say your natural hog casings or your natural beef casings are used for making uh, different types of diameter of sausages. Yeah. Whether it, it be your Italian sausage, your bratwurst, uh, even up to your kielbasa, you know, big, thicker sausages. Um, a milk byproduct, um, your, your collagen, uh, is used for making the, the bigger Italian sausages like your super sods and uh, the ring bologna is is made from those collagen casings i see somebody who follows me knows that i have five different machines for meat so they must be talking about the the large grinder as well as the the 50 pound mixer which i still haven't used yet 
Blood, um, blood sausage, that's, uh, that, that's popular over in the, uh, Europe, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, that's that's curdled blood. That's you're you're, you're, yeah. you're kind of boiling it down until it starts to cook. Now, uh, I forget what live they were on, but they got to talking about uh, liver, and then the subject came up about liver worse. Brown swagger. I love me some uh, brown swagger. I'll sit there and cut it thin and put it between two breads or a roll with some mayo. Uh-huh. And what you said that's made of liver? Yes, it's a it's made with liver. Is it a, a calf's liver, beef liver, chicken liver, goose liver? That I don't know. Okay. It could be a mixture of all of them. But uh it comes in tubes. I guess they're probably about a three inch too. You could get it. You can get it sliced up. That's what usually what I do. And uh, any thickness you want. So. Uh, so when yeah. you say it comes in a tube, is it like toothpaste? No, it, it's, it's, you know how you got like the uh, chubs. That's what I'm trying to think. Oh, of. like, okay, that type of thing. You know, like a baloney chub. Right. Well, you also have a uh, bratwurst chub. Right. And they'll actually slice it with a, with a wrapper or whatever you want to call it still on. So when you get home, you just peel that off, go for it. So it's like a cellulose casing that's on the outside, a plastic casing that you peel off. Yeah, it's a pet, you know, it's got all the information on the outside. So, you know, it, it's basically whatever they ship the product in. Right. That casing, then it's kind of like a metal, metal crimped on each end. Sure. It's uh, it's got the the uh, the hog clips on them. Yeah. It sounds almost like a liverwurst. Yeah, I sent uh, I sent Tyler back a, a answer. Um, I don't know what color the in, inside of the wallet's going to be, but he was asking me what color thread. So I said, whatever color the inside's going to be. So he could have it a bright green like these, and I'm not worried about it. I'll be just excited to get it. I'm a I'm a liver fan, whether it's uh, it's pate, foie gras, um, or just calves liver and onions. Liver and onions, I, I love that. My wife can't stand when I order that at the diner. Well, but to be honest with you, uh, I worked at a state hospital. Uh, we had, you know, the mentally ill people. And I worked in the cafeteria. But I did what they call out kitchens. So you had central where they cook everything and then they ship it out in trucks to the different buildings. And then, you know, I serve. And uh, my mom made liver and onions. But to be honest with you, that's when I really, I mean, I don't know if it was real liver or not, but uh, at that hospital, that's where I really love, I couldn't wait for a liver and onion night to come up. I mean, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I, I don't think my wife's a fan because of the smell. But whenever yeah. I get that at the diner, um, it, it's something that people at other tables see, and they end up ordering the same item. Well, see, that's just like cow tongue. My mom worked her butt off, you know, because you have to boil it and then peel it and then cook it. Hmm. 
and uh, it's not one of those deals where you get the tongue, season it, and throw it on a cooker. I mean, there's steps. You, I mean, that's like a brisket. You got to trim it, right? Right. Well, cow tongue, basically, you got to trim it. And uh, like I say, uh, once you get that done, you get it cooked. It, it, to me, it tastes like roast beef. You and know? how were you guys eating it? Like, uh, was it? Did you put it on a deli slicer and slice it up, or well, was it, it was carved hand, up like a roast? We beef? didn't have we didn't have that kind of stuff back in those days. Not even the hand grinder. My grandmother had the hand grinder. Well, my, we, my great grandparents had that we as well. Didn't, but I'm sure they were out there. Okay. You know, my family, you know, wasn't well off, so to speak. We did what we had to with what we had, you know. Right. So, uh, looking for the pup. And, uh, like I say, grandma when we first this is my grandmom's house she had it built back in the early 60s and when we first lived here she had an old gas stove and believe me i miss it but uh mom would stand there with a great big old pot boil the tongue Hey, Lewis. Um, well, Lewis is here, so we should get our shot glasses and each take a shot of tequila. No, I don't have tequila. I'd I have, do. I'd have to go out in the kitchen and get a. Well, I got a. I got a shot of a fireball. Well, it that goes fine. <laughs> well, the trouble is, I like the taste of it. So once I start. You know, I'll be hugging walls going upstairs to bed. It's not a problem. You don't have to. You're not, <laughs> you're not driving. Yeah, I know. I you know, know. You, you, you've already got a dart to smoke, so go with it. Trumpet says no shots tonight, maybe tomorrow. Oh, boy. I, you know, the reason for doing a shot, and he's a humble individual. Yeah. Is that his son, if you watch his latest videos, just graduated from the army. Yes, I saw I saw that. Yeah, I saw that last one. And, and uh, he got the, the super deluxe behind the scene tour of Rectech. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting them to cust custom build him one. I thought that was coming. I was waiting for something like that in the video where he just Happens to take one with him on his yeah, way up to South Carolina. Because uh, Pitmaster X, he did that. He went to where they make the grass, uh, yeah, grass, gas grills. Yeah. And he actually put his together. Napoleon. That's where it was. Napoleon, that, don't they build fireplaces? They, uh, they do uh, gas grills, and they do a lot of gas grills. You couldn't have it delivered? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, they could have built one for you on a trailer, and you could have trailered it back. It seemed like there was a fairly large uh, Rectech smoker when you walked out onto the Rectech deck. There was one <laughs> right to the side of you. It had your name on it, and the parking lot was fairly empty from what it, what it looked like in your video. So you could have just, you know, hey, could put it on top. walked out with it. Put it on top of the SUV. Oh, he got he got. New Rectech. Oh, he did get one. Yeah. He said he did get the big one. Was that the one that was on the Rectech deck? Mm -hmm. 
And wet ass pork is saying real expensive gas grill. So you must be talking about Napoleon. It's yeah. got to be up there then, uh, I, I guess, with uh, like the Viking grills and, and that type. Yeah. Well, over, over there, you know, Roll, he, uh, he, he has money. Who's that? Who's got money? Pitmaster X. His name's Roll. Uh -huh. R-O-E-L. Is he the gentleman that's over in Europe? Yeah. The Netherlands. The Netherlands. Okay. Well, I guess that's still Europe. It is. But, uh, yeah, he, uh, he's got a, some chickens and he did a couple pigs that he butchered. And, uh, he actually had a, uh, butcher come over a friend of his that, well, he made friends with a butcher. He came over to show him how to butcher his own hog. Hmm. Really? Yeah, I've well, seen the, the links and the Vikings. I've seen the ones that get built into uh, to, to people's outside grilling area. Right. Now, a ATB, not ATB, but All Things Barbecue. Mm -hmm. Tom, they actually have kits that you can buy outside grill area. Look like stone and all. Chef Tom. So it's it's um, made to be able to do like a, a build-in outside yeah, of the deck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It builds around your uh, grill. Mm -hmm. You can get them with a little sink, plenty of countertop, cabinets, you know. I'm sure it's pretty well expensive, though. I'm on a budget these days. Uh, I'm not being cheap. I'm being oh, frugal. Yeah. Being economical. Yeah. Because I like toys. And uh, these toys tend to add up. I, well, uh, the only way I'm getting the next big toy, and I want a, a really big offset, is if I somehow win it in a uh, in a raffle. Yeah. Well, I, I shot my wad. When uh, Traeger came out with their Timberline XL, I forked out that 4K for that bad boy. Mm. I, that's what I do all my cooks on. And uh, I uh, also have a uh, Pit Boss. I got a Pit Boss 1150. And my Traeger is like 1320 cooking space. So uh, I was thinking about getting something smaller, like a, you know, 500 series. Because, you know, a single rack of rib on that big Traeger. It looks so lost, and I don't do I don't do big uh, big cooks, cause like you were saying earlier, which one is that, uh, uh, Randy? Wet ass pork has got a three hundred twenty five gallon offset. Very jealous. I want a minimum of a two fifty. Smoking yeah, Joe is selling his pit. Very nice. Yeah, I want it. I want it at least a 250 gallon to be able to put in the backyard on the golf cart wheels so that I can move it around. Right. Or um, a 500 gallon on a trailer. I would love to have one of those. But like you're saying, you know, one rack of ribs on there is going to look pretty tiny. Yeah. And I don't have enough people to, to, to feed. Friends of mine don't come up this way. I have to go down to them. So it's going to make it even more of a pain to have to drive down there with a trailer barbecue to cook at their house. Yeah, see, that's what I was getting ready to say. 
Hmm, excuse me. You were talking earlier about the food. Nobody can or nobody's around to eat it. Well, I'm me. I can only eat so much. Right. And I'm tired of bagging and freezing. You know? Yep. So basically what I do is I eat what I can. And then my oldest son, big boy, big, big, big boy. He eats well. So when daddy cooks, uh, he eats well. And then my youngest, he, he takes some of it sometimes, depending upon what I made. Oh, my God. This guy's got exactly... He's got toys that I'm looking for. A 325-gallon offset. And a 52 by 32 chud box knockoff and a 30 inch griddle. All of that on a trailer. Now he's saying chud box knockoff. Does that mean somebody made one that looks like chuds? Uh, only he's going to know. That's quite possible. That that chud box, I think, is built on the, the same type of concept as what Rodney Scott has that you're cooking over hot coals. Right. The same thing that um, was it's in, I think it's in North Carolina, Northeast Carolina, Skylight Inn. And that guy does whole hogs as well. And he does them right over the coals. So it's that's what the Chud Box is built on, that old school type of pit. So you built the uh, Chud Box knockoff WEP? That's what he says. I built it. Pepe, I don't, I don't know if I remember that one, Randy. Yes, they are. And they're well seasoned, believe me. Yeah, I, I, I bet the Rodney Scott pits are the shizzle. Of course, you got to see them live. Um. But I still think that his original pits that he has, the place that he had with his parents look like a gas station. That old school pit where they're built out of cinder blocks is is still where you're getting some of the best flavor. Again, I don't know that's subjective, but his new pits that are made out of metal that have the, uh, <clears throat> the whole wire system on it so that it takes the weight off, right. they still look amazing. You I've always – he uh, – Lewis in his video got to see them live. I've only seen them in people's videos. You talking about the uh, thousand gallons he's got? I don't think Rodney Scott's pits are thousand gallon pits. They're they're big hog cookers uh, that, that he also uses for making his ribs. Oh yeah, he's got that big rectangle one. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I was mixing him up with a couple others. Yeah, if I if I have the opportunity, if I have the time off and <laughs> and uh, the right vehicle, I would love to do the road trip heading down to northeast South Car Northeast Carolina to go to that that gentleman's place, the the Skylight Inn, and then hit some of the other places in the Carolinas. Work my way down to Charleston for all the seafood, uh, out into Georgia, and then loop around down towards Texas and then uh, hopefully with a rental car, leave the car there when I'm done, get on a plane and fly back. Yeah. Now see, if I did something like that, I'd start in Richmond, Tuffy Stone. Is that where he is? He's in Richmond, Virginia? Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Oh. So he's not that far from me. He's only he like two and a half hours. And like I say, I would go there. And then like you were saying, go to Carolinas, north and south, down to Georgia. Yep. Sam Sam Jones, I would like to go see. Um he I think he's in the Carolinas. Sam Jones, I think that's the guy that, that skylight in. Oh, really? Yes. 
Oh, look who it is. It's taste tester number two. He found me with no shirt on because it's so hot in the house, even though we have the air conditioning on. It's not right, taste tester number two. Yeah, well, my air conditioner ran out, or well, not ran out, but ran constant <laughs> for like three days to where it was freezing up and stuff. And I went downstairs to get that rack of uh, St. Louis out of the freezer, and I actually had water in the downstairs. So mm. it was mainly around the air conditioning unit because it's hooked AC heater because I got oil heat, you know, combination. So I went down and vacuumed it up dry it out so now i sporadically run my ac i don't run it all the time when it gets to where i can't you know i can't really bear it anymore to make sure the fan was still running um and then i shut it off because when I go to bed, I've got a window unit that runs, you know, but that's on uh, saver mode, so to speak. So it runs and then it shuts off. And right. after after so many minutes, it comes back. I mean, in a way, it annoying and keeps me up. But... Uh, well, it's almost like an eco mode. Yeah. 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 yeah well, but, uh, here here we have uh, central air. And the, the fan is on variable speed. And on its own, it will speed up and slow down. Similar to like what you're talking about with, uh, with like an eco mode. So as it, it approaches the temperature, it slows the fan down. And then... As the temperature increases and we need to lower the the cool air in the house, or rather raise the cool air in the, the house, it'll start yeah. to blow it a little bit harder. Yeah, I mean, you could actually hear the compressors kick on and off in the unit. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll come on and it'll be fans and then the compressor will kick on. And then you feel that nice, beautiful AC. And then uh, it kicks off. The fan runs a little bit and then shuts down. Goes to sleep, so to speak. Sure. But, uh, so. So look at this wet ass pork has 120 gallon on a trailer and six other barbecues in the backyard. So, I don't know how he gets away with it. He must either he's in the barbecue business or he gives his wife everything in life that she needs. And he's able to get away with that. They must have the most incredible marriage and communication or, uh, you know, that's an assumption. And he's uh, just a really successful single guy. Well, if he, if he is married, then that's one gentleman that definitely does his homework. <laughs> yep. Uh Hojo, I have not fired up the old smoky since the chicken cook video. And okay, okay. Taste tester number two is flying around in a chair. He I thinks see he's that. at Dorney Park. Slow down there, kid. So no, I haven't fired it up. I learned my lesson that it is a hot and fast cooker. It's a great chicken cooker. It is <laughs> not a smoker. The name Old Smokey is deceiving and it's great marketing thinking that it's going to be something that's for smoking and it's not. And um, I, I learned in the video that uh, it's going to be great for ribs. It's great for chicken. It'll be, probably be great for other items like burgers and hot dogs and sausage that I want to do at a faster pace. Being that it uses either charcoal or uh, or or lump, either brick brick out charcoal, lump charcoal, and I can throw a couple of pieces of wood in there. It'll it'll really uh, infuse some great flavors into the meats. But nope, I haven't had an opportunity to to use it again since that video. I should, 
I should use it. It's sitting back there. It doesn't have a cover on it. So with um, nearly two weeks of rain, I should probably drain any water that's inside of it right now. Because the next thing it's going to become is a mosquito farm. Yeah, that's what I like about my uh, pit balls and Traeger. It's got some nice covers that come with them. Yeah. I mean, pit balls, they gave you the cover. Traeger, I had to buy that. So not only did I pay out the butt for uh, the barbecue, but then I had to buy the um, cover. That was 60, 60 some dollars, you know, but, uh, what do you want me to comment on? On you doing fist bumping in the background? No. <laughs> I, I remember when mine were that small. Well, he's the he's the older one. He's yeah. seven. the The little one is eighteen months. One year. Wow. Eighteen months. Yeah, Steve and Chuck. There's like three years between them. Oh, Trump is My son knows everybody's name. He know he's he gets their stickers. He sees them uh, when I'm doing these, you know, for watching YouTube videos. So he's next to me, and he sees Trumpet Master seventy seven. So he talks like he knows this guy forever. He's like, "Oh, Trumpet's on right now," <laughs> as if they've been best buddies their whole life. You know, they they go to the park together and play baseball or football or soccer. He collects, uh, he collects everybody's stickers. Whenever they come in, they end up on his, what do they, you put them on your iPad? Um, I put, yeah. Yeah, he puts them on his iPad. So we had to go out and get stickers so that I can send them out to everybody. Yeah. That's I've why got, we have the shirts and the hats too. So that, you know. He, I've, I've got some myself. He stole mine. I've got a uh, barbecue. i got two barbecues. Oh, One. One is a regular, to where you I know, just I know because I know because it's white. Stick it, and then the uh, the other one is like a transparent uh, sticker. Yep. And then I've got my new uh, my new family gaming logo. I got some of them. I bought a whole batch of my old ones. So uh, usually when I send them out, I send a group of four. The old uh, gaming and the uh, new gaming. Because also there's a name change between the two. So what is... Uh, and and um, Trumpet wants you to know that he has a jalapeno. I told him today he has a spicy pickle too. Do you think that's funny? Does it go up your ass? What? Does it go up your ass? No, it doesn't. And you shouldn't be saying that at seven. <laughs> Boy, they pick things up quick, it don't they? Burns yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does it burn his coolie, his spicy pickle? Yeah. Uh, well, if he has too much spicy pickle, it'll burn on the way in and on the way out. Yes, it will. But yeah. uh yeah, those uh crock pot ribs that I did yesterday. I did uh a quart of my <sighs> sweet a quart of my sweet and then uh I had a boo-boo with the uh, sweet and spicy. I got new jars, and they've got plastic lids on them. So I tried a color key, mm -hmm. you know, the different ones. The regular barbecue, that's just a regular metal uh, lid. 
and then the sweet was like a blue, and the uh, sweet and spicy was yellow. Well, it was hot, but I wanted to put them in the fridge. So I tightened the lid down, but I didn't tighten, tighten. Mm -hmm. I made it almost to the refrigerator. Bloop! The lid popped right off in my hand. The jar went down to the floor. <sighs> so I had three quarters of a quart mm. all over the kitchen floor. Which was a heck of a mess to clean up. Oh, yeah. But uh, I got it clean. So I had, I guess... Almost a cup, I want to say, left in the jar. Mm. And I put that in the uh, mix also to get rid of it. So that way I can make up another batch, and uh, which I have to do next couple days. I'm going to make up a new batch of sweet and spicy and a new batch of uh, sweet. But this time I'm going to tweak it. But anyhow, I kind of overly spiced the sweet and spicy. And just that little bit left in that jar. Now I'm talking about a quart jar. And this is about how much was left in it. Mm hmm. Those ribs tasted so good, but they had a nice, nice little bite to them. Because like I say, I don't do well with uh, spice. But I'm trying, I'm trying to eat some that's not that hot, hot. And uh, that was... I would almost say that was perfect for me. Now, my son, Otis, he can go and he can hog out on some spicy food. Of course, he can hog out on any kind of food, really. <laughs> but, so uh, what do you what do you use for the, the heat? Are you using chili well, peppers? Are you using cayenne? Uh, uh, I'm using cayenne and uh, chili powder. Hmm. So I have to cut back on the cayenne, definitely. And uh, I'll still use the same amount of chili powder. But I think the cayenne, because I kind of double dose the cayenne, and whew, yeah, it was hot. Yeah, I love spicy food. Um, I, I, the hotter the better. Well, see, when I grew up, we didn't have that type of stuff in the house. When we cooked, it was all just normal cooking. Well, <laughs> you know, bringing up um, what I kind of named this chat, talking about <clears throat> jerk chicken. Things like that. Uh, yeah. I, I love those scotch bonnet peppers. I love the heat. So when I go ahead and, and take those those chicken drumsticks and I marinate them overnight in the the wet uh, 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 the wet jerk seasoning instead of right. just the dried powders that go on, that's going to be so damn hot. My wife is going to be sweating bullets. And taste tester number two over here doesn't know what he's in for. I think it's going to be quite funny. You know, just as we're, we're having this back and forth about it burns on the way in and it burns on the way out. Well, I'll tell you. He's when, going to be when, burning it up. When they go and fart, they could probably start the barbecue for you. <laughs> Cause they're he, be... says, he says uh, that, that if you fart, you're going to light the barbecue. But I'm going to teach you how to use a match or a lighter and what happens when you fart on that. You're going to have a real explosion. 
I had a guy in, we used to go and sneak cigarettes from our parents and we mm -hmm. used to go and sit in between the houses and he farted it one time and lit it and caught us pajama body, bottoms on fire. <laughs> oh boy. I've got some jalapenos, uh, peppers growing. What's a good thing to put on the plants? Because I've got something eating the hell out of, pardon the expression, eating the heck out of my uh, plants. Someone told me to plant marigolds in between each row of my tomatoes and my peppers. And that would keep these, these different type of worms and grubs from getting in there and, and eating my plants because I don't well, want to put any chemicals on. I mean, I, in the, in the beginning when I planted everything, I used miracle grow and I used uh, a, a fish based fertilizer, but after right. that, everything's been organic. But uh, I heard something about mixing a little bit of dish soap with water. That's possible. And sure. spraying because that leaves a nasty taste. And they don't want to mess with that anymore? Sure. It also makes it slippery. So if you use Dawn dish soap, which right. is what they use as a degreaser, it'll make everything just a, a little slick. And that might keep the the bugs from attaching to your, your vegetables and eating them. I might Can have you give to me another it. little light? Sure. Thanks. Because uh, the two plants that I, well, I've got, Two Actually, are... Get me one of the yellow cans. Don't get a Miller Lite. Get me one of the, the German yellow cans. Sorry about that. He That's what he's good for is getting me cold beer. Hey. I have my own bartender in the house at seven. My, mine's right down here. It's a little <laughs> fridge that my youngest gave me. So it's right next to me. All I got to do is reach down. No. But uh, I've got two plants that basically I've got a buy some pots and transplant them because they're doing so good other than the bugs eating them. Do you have them in a raised bed? No, they're in uh they're they're to be honest with you. Yeah. My seed my seedlings. This is what I started them out in. A red solo cup. Yeah. I went and put some holes in the bottom so it drains out. Right. And uh, so I got to get them out of this and get them transplanted into a bigger pot so they can grow bigger, you know. Right. I've okay. got, um, I only, <clears throat> of, of what I have in pots outside, I've got two tomato plants and I have three pepper plants. Everything else is in raised beds. Right. Because, as you know, being in Maryland, we have the deer everywhere. So oh, So even with yeah. the fences and everything around. Then the other thing that I'm finding is the woodchucks are trying to find their way in there. Um, oh. The see. squirrels want to get in to get to the Brussels sprouts. Yeah. But uh, probably, see, what's the day? Thursday. So probably tomorrow or Saturday, I'll run up Home Depot, see what kind of pots they got, what kind of prices. And then I'll have to get some uh, potting soil to fill them up with and uh, get them transplanted because I've got... Uh, I think it's Miracle Grow uh, starter, you know, seedling starter soil. Yep. That's what they that's what they started out in. So uh, I've got two, three, six. I got six pepper plants, three different kinds. Six pepper plants, three different kinds. So you have a habanero. Oh, you have a jalapeno. Yeah, well, it's a low heat uh, jalapeno, mm -hmm. and then I have a El Jefe, 
What's El Jefe? Uh huh. Well, what is that? What's El Jefe? It's it's a uh, it's a pepper that it's hard to explain. You'd almost have to Google it. Mm-hmm. And then I've got one that's called a lipstick, which is supposed to be sweet and low heat. So uh, I've got four plants. Wait a minute. One, two. I got three plants of those. Two plants of the El Jefe's and one plant of the jalapeno. Mm. So. Uh, I, I have the ghost them. chilies. I have the habaneros. I have the. Two different type of jalapenos, regular size jalapenos, and some type of giant jalapeno. And I've got the bell peppers, red, purple, and green. Did we do orange this year too? Um, I don't remember if we did orange. No, then I've got the Japanese shishito peppers, which are really a sweet pepper, like the bell peppers, and um, chipotle and something else. I forget. There's another type of of. Uh, Mexican type of pepper out there. We have a lot. Yes, we have a lot of peppers. I have an, an entire trough, a whole raised bed of different peppers plus the pots. And what about tomatoes? No, we're just talking about peppers right now, not the tomatoes. Okay, the El Jefe looks just like a regular jalapeno. Size wise and shape wise, from the picture that I'm seeing. Oh, cayenne. That's the other pepper I have. It's not a Mexican pepper, it's cayenne. And then we have long, we have the Italian long hots and the, the cow. Cowhorn peppers? I don't know what if that's hot or not. Right. It doesn't say what kind of... Uh... You know how they usually give the uh, looms? Yes. The, uh, the, uh, how hot uh, they are? Yep. I don't see that. So. How many Scoville units? Yeah, that's it. Sure. So uh, they average three and a half to four inch fruit. And it just says type jalapeno. So, Serranos well, are great. Serrano uh, peppers are excellent. The Serranos. Yeah. Great pepper. Some of the uh, stuff I'll, I'll take and I'll roast and then put it in a, um, a mason jar. One of those, um, I don't know what you, what you call them. I just call them mason jars. Right. Ball jars, and then I'll I'll load them up with oil and garlic and seal them up and put them on the shelf, because uh, I I love having the roasted peppers. See, this is a little cardboard type envelope that I keep all three packs in, and. Which one is this? All right, this is uh, not a Pinot. 
which looks just like a regular jalapeno also. And then the other ones aren't really, they don't really have a pitcher. They're just seeds. Lip, lip, lipstick, sauce. lipstick, sweet pepper seeds. I got a twenty plus seeds in the pack, and it was uh, three forty. And. This is the El Jefe, but there's no picture. I got that from Johnny. Hmm. So I watch, uh, I watch different shows and, uh, That's my lipstick seeds. So basically everything else kind of looks like those. Seed wise. Right. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't grown things from seeds and I know that, um, that Walmart sells those little starter packs. They look like little cups that you put the seeds into yeah. in order for them to, to germinate. But the plants that I'm buying, I end up going over to Lowe's and the Home Depot and some of the um, the gardening stores, and I've been buying from them. Right. So... Uh... That's my little collection of seeds. So I told my oldest that uh, if they turn out to be a little spicier than what I can, you know, I really like, then he'll be getting them. I told Lance I'd probably send him a couple. How do I make him a mod? How do I do that? I don't know how that's done. Who you want to make a mod? Uh, trumpet. You got to go in YouTube and do it. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's why. All right, because uh, I'm yeah. a StreamYard. All right, let me yeah, go on YouTube. StreamYard, you me. can't. You have to do everything in uh, YouTube. All right, hope, let me lower the volume so this thing's not talking back at us. All right, let's see how this is done. Oh, T2. Did that work? Hopefully that did it, yeah. Yeah, it won't show up here, but uh, and uh, it's the three little dots next to the name. It'll give us options. No, it only allows me to put them in timeout or ban them. <laughs> put them in timeout. <laughs> what are we, children? <laughs> I think that did it. What do you mean, put him in timeout? He's not going in timeout. I I did it through. Through uh, through YouTube, so he should. Yeah, he, he's got a, a ratchet next to his name now. Yeah, he's he's blue with a wrench now. Yep. So yeah, see, they won't show up here in uh, Streamyard. Only uh, YouTube. 
Now, see, you can uh, you can comment here to where I can't because you're the host. I have to go on YouTube and comment. Oh, here. Comment all you want. Have fun. I don't know what I'm doing. I need somebody who does. How do I... I have no idea how to do that. How do I give you the ability to comment? Let's say you got these three things up here. Edit mic. Nope. It doesn't do any of those things. So those three little dots next to your name don't work. Yeah. That's because I'm a bad boy. You must be. <laughs> that must be what it is. Uh, I don't know. That's like on my lives. My oldest, Christy and Simon, are my three mods. Right. Christy, she's quick on a lot. Oh, man, she's right there. You don't want to mess with that lady. So, uh, like I say, I got three sauces now. Yep. And, uh, the fourth one is a spicy. And then I want to get into do like a vinegar sauce. Mm hmm And uh, Russ and I, Smoky Ribs, we were talking. I asked him, I sent him an email and asked him a couple questions. I've been thinking of a... Bacon onion sauce. And what what's the what's the base for that sauce? Like a ketchup base? Oh yeah. I yeah. two two cups of ketchup and then a whole lot of other ingredients. Mm. My poor counter space. I have no counter space with all the ingredients I've got out there. I got half my stove taken up with ingredients. <laughs> yeah, I have a uh, cabinet after cabinet after cabinet full of seasonings. Um, so I have the upstairs kitchen and I have down here. The upstairs kitchen, I have an entire cabinet full of different sauces and uh and 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 dry seasonings and different type of oils and things like that and then down here in the bar area i ended up moving some other glasses and mixers around and i filled that up and then i have boxes and boxes of seasoning here that have they just haven't been touched yet oh yeah i'm same way i've gotten i've gotten so many rubs that they've actually gone hard on me you know yep But uh, yeah, I got so many different rubs and sauces. I need more more foods to cook to try all these things on. And yeah. then what I should be doing is coming up with like an Excel spreadsheet and writing down what I like, what I don't like, uh, what I'm combining together with something else. Like for example, the blue hogs. Um, I think it's. What is that? The the big beef rub. That's great when I combine that with the white lightning. But I only right. know that because I made some mistakes one day and put them together and they turned out to be fabulous. Then there's some other stuff that's really pepper heavy. And I have to be careful when I mix that pepper heavy with another one that's pepper heavy because it's just way too much black pepper. Yeah. Now, see, I actually uh, was looking into, I've got 16 mesh black pepper but i want to grind it down to like a 12 mesh not 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 fine like you put in your shakers for the house mm -hmm. 
but I want to get it a little smaller than the 16. And uh, I got to figure out how to do that. I found that the the uh, the butcher's grind and the 16 are pretty close in the, in their consistency as far as the the size of each one of the the I don't know what you call it granules the granules thank you so I don't have anywhere up here where I can buy something that says standard on there number 16 I went right. to Restaurant Depot or the restaurant store and ended up buying it one was a fine grind and the other one was a butcher's grind well see I googled and. I got mine off Amazon. Right. I was being cheap. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is I don't use it, and I've got this big jar about right. so big. <clears throat> and uh, I got granulated garlic powder. Regular onion powder. Sure. I've got uh, kosher salt. Coarse, you know, it's coarse grind also. Yes. And uh, I got some smoked paprika. That's about it mm. on those But when I make the sauces, you know, I had to go out and I had, well, I've got to go out and restock on my vinegar. I had to buy a good sized thing of mustard. Um, I did get another jar of uh, chili powder. But when I make the sweet, I don't put the chili powder in. I just substitute the sweet for that. And that's molasses and a brown sugar. No, wait a minute. What is that? Brown sugar already goes in it. I don't know. I've got teaspoons. I've got tablespoons. I've got quarter cups, half cups, two cups, you know. But some of those, some of those seasonings you have have a half-life on them. Like with, with the, your commercial seasonings that you buy, the, the, the pre-made mixes, they have anti-caking agents in there. Right. That number, that 16 mesh black pepper that you have in that huge container, yeah. it begins to oxidize. So it loses its, its its efficacy. It loses that that effervescence. The oils begin to evaporate. And eventually oh, okay. you end up with something that's more like sawdust than black pepper. You, the right. bite isn't there anymore. Right. That's the problem when, when you buy things in bulk and you're not using them all the time. Well, you know, it says like 16 ounce and I'm thinking, you know, I drink out of 20 ounce right. red cups and then I get it in and it's a big bottle. Sure. So you need to have a heavy hand whenever you're yeah. seasoning from from the top and you're sprinkling it down, and making it rain. You just need to have more of a uh, instead of a pinch, you need to have a punch. Right. As far as Hojo goes, yes, I have mopped my meat uh, for the Super Bowl. When I made ribs here in the house, we mopped all the ribs, with, uh, and it came out insane. It is great flavor. I had a dry rub on there, and then we, we mopped them every half hour. We went outside with the mop. Can you get the, the, the mop that I just used? It's inside the pitcher. Recently, I was mopping chicken. Um, uh, the, the, it's just an amazing flavor. It's by the sink. I've got to get a hold of uh, Brian down in Florida there at uh, the meat store and order a couple more turkey breasts. Those things are so huge that they would cover my face. That's how big they are. Thoughts on Old Bay? Old Bay is great on grilled vegetables. Old Bay is great on crabs. Um, Old Bay is great on onions. I know you guys in in the Texas region love your fajitas. 
So it's great on the onions for fajitas. Yeah, here's my mop. Uh, I yeah, was using uh, this to, to mop the chicken. Oh, Old Bay is good until I found out J.O. Season kicks its butt. Oh, sorry. Which one kicks its butt? J.O. Seasoning. It's a uh, family-owned seasoning company. Okay. And uh, it's a little more coarse than Old Bay. But I've gotten shrimp and crab with it on there. And you won't go back to Old Bay once you taste it. Really? Yes. Or at least I'm not. That's another thing I want to do. Corner on the cob on the grill. That's what we did tonight. Really? Uh, yep, yep. I, I let the corn, I didn't bother peeling it. I kept it in the husk. And I let it soak for three hours in water. And then um, when it was ready, I threw it on the barbecue and cooked it uh, for 20 minutes. And then I rolled it, cooked it for another 20 minutes and pulled it off. So in total, it cooked 40 minutes. It was perfect on the inside. All that All right. water gets absorbed into the husk and into the cob. And then it steams from the outside in and from the inside out. Right. But, uh, I forget. I think it might have been Simon. Did he do grilled corn? I saw a video today or yesterday where they did uh, grilled corn, and that's what they did. They soaked, I think Simon soaked it, then put it on the grill, and then when it was done, he shucked it. Right. He didn't pull it. He didn't pull the uh, skin off. He just pulled it down. And then he put it on the grill and got char marks on the corn. That's good. <clears throat> but uh, I buy, uh, when I make my uh, stews, I go and uh, buy fire roasted potato uh, tomatoes in a yep. can. And uh, they've got one that's uh, fire roasted garlic. And that's delicious. I love fire roasted garlic. I love taking the garlic bulbs, like the elephant garlic, cutting the top off, putting it in the oven, or, or again, putting that on the barbecue, and letting it go low and slow for a while to the point where you can just squeeze each one of those little cloves of garlic onto yeah. a piece of bread and it smears. Oh, yeah. So you don't uh, roll it up in a Reynolds wrap? No, no, I do. I do. It's oh. uh, But the top is cut off. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, you almost have to. But yeah, that's uh, delicious. You know, you were talking about pellet grill earlier. Yes. And uh, a lot of people say you can't get a good smoke or flavor on a pellet grill. Okay. I did three, two, one rips. Oh, really? It was three, two and a half. Because they were falling off the bone by the time that half hour sauce was up. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I did uh, three hours, 225. And then I uh, wrapped them. You know, of course, naturally with the butter, honey, a little bit of brown sugar. Let them go two hours. And then I sauced it with somebody. 
I don't know if it was Cosmo or uh, Heath. Let that go on the grill to set up. But I tell you, dude, I bit into those ribs. I had a smoke ring top and bottom. And you could taste the smoke in it. And that was the very first time I ever tasted meat that had a smoky flavor. Mm-hmm. And that was my very first rack of ribs I did. I did it a three, two, one method. We used to do the three to one method when uh, a while back. I used to do the barbecue competitions, and everybody that was the thing was a three two one method. Right. That was all those KCBS championships. That was before this guy was born. When I saw a couple of dollars in my pocket. Yeah. Right? Yep. But, uh, I plan, I got, a, I got that whole rack of spares down in the, uh, freezer. I'll bring them up. I'll throw them on the grill. And I'll also do a three, two, one on them. Right. And, uh, I'm not going to trim them up. I'm going to leave them as spare. Then once they're done, then I might think about trimming them up, you know, cutting the tenderloin and all this stuff off. I will, I will pull the membrane. That's something I haven't been doing, especially with my crock pot ribs, because right. by the time they get done, I mean, they're in a slow cooker for uh, seven, seven and a half hours. Well, really, six and wow. a half to seven hours. And when I go to bring them out, to put them on the plate, excuse me, I take them out in pieces. That's how tender they are. And uh, I just sit there with the tweezers, pull the bones like nothing. There's no resistance at all. Pup, she loves the bones. She eats them like candy because they're so soft. I've never made ribs in a crock pot. I got a video on this stupid camera right here. Are you almost done? No. That I cannot get out of this camera and put it on the computer. Because for some reason, it's an MOV file that does not work with this computer. And, and what I, if you what if you googled say oh I've googled MOV to MP3 or MP4 I've done that yep and it still didn't work uh, as long as that camera's hooked to the computer I can watch the video but if I download it to computer and unhook that camera I can't do it I shoot all of my stuff either on the iPhone or the Android. Well, see, so I, I don't know what it what it records as, but uh, since I have somebody doing post production, I have to take it, upload it onto Google Drive, and that's how they get a hold of it. Right. Now, see, I got a uh, GoPro over here, mm -hmm. but it messed up on me a couple times to where I actually lost real good cooks. For some reason, it didn't film a couple parts of the cooks. 
So I went ahead and got that one. Well, that was the waste of almost $300. Right. You know, I don't need a camera that I can just take pictures of. I don't take pictures. You know? So why not use, like, looking back at it now, you know, versus, say, having a cell phone, why not use choose a cell phone that has so many megapixels and it's a lot more convenient and it's all in one? I got an i10. Yeah. You know. I feel I saw the I saw the phone I need right now. Like I said, I'm 66 years old. I right. don't need I don't need to upgrade to the i14 or whatever 28 version of sure. uh, Android, you know. All I got to do is charge that that text messages mail phone but calls. apple apple's notorious for having a battery that degrades over time and they almost force you to do the upgrade since they stop putting out new operating systems for your phone right so after a certain period of time you don't have an option you, you can't upgrade the phone any longer and the battery well, doesn't last the way i look at it i can get three days out of that battery if not more that's great and when it gets slow i just plug in the charger charge it up and i go another few days sure <clears throat> now i'd like we had uh, iphones for my work what was it? iPhone 6. That, that tells you how far back it was. And I liked it. So I bought my 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 next upgrade with the Verizon. And that was, you know, the iPhone 6. I forget what version was coming out, but I figured six, it's been out for a year or so. All the bugs are out of it. You know, I think they were doing the iPhone 11 or 12 or something. Right. I got the 10. Why? Because it's been out there for a year. You know, bugs, issues, gone. So, uh, I haven't decided if I do upgrade, if I'm going to keep iPhone or go into the Android again, because that's what I had before I had Android. Yeah. Android's great. So that's what, that's what this one is. This is the, um, DS Galaxy. Ultra. What is this one? DS22 Ultra. It's the, the S22 Ultra. He knows better than I do. He's, he's all about <laughs> technology. But, uh, in fact, you know, this is me last year. This is this is how fat I was. Fat Dave. That's that he knows that. That was Fat Dave. That was Dave when Dave was 244 pounds. Now I'm down to 160. Good. Well, I was pushing 270, and now I'm down to like 210, 212. That's great. I lost weight. Don't know why or how. Neither do the doctors. So I went and had all these tests done. They never came up with anything, so I said to hell with it. I still eat. I'm still alive. You know, my, my weight's kind of steadied, steadied off. So, why worry? True. You know, I go I go to the primary, God forbid. Yep. And uh, talk to her. I go to my heart doctor. Talk to him. 
He's happy with all that's going on. That's all that matters to me. To heck with her. <clears throat> you know? Well, I took all these medications in order to lose the weight. People think I went to the gym, uh, but it, it wasn't. It's things like Ozampic and, and Bongiorno and Metformin and those type of medications that work to lower your blood sugar and your cholesterol, your triglycerides, and uh, just does something to your brain. It tells your brain you're not hungry. All right. Well, maybe that's what happened to me because I'm on seven different medications. And uh, I went from loving to eat. Uh, yeah. J-O, J-O seasoning, Hojo. J-O seasoning, that's correct. It's a uh, Maryland-based company. Family operated. Uh, the people's father, well, well, the one guy, his father started it, and it was uh, J-O number one, which was a no salt. I got J.O. number two, which has the salt added. And, of course, they have other spices or other seasonings for, like, seafood, stuff like that. Right. But uh, that's, only, that's only 25, 30 minutes from me right down the road to where I could go to their warehouse and pick up stuff. They sell it in the little shaker bottles. They sell mm -hmm. it in the... I got the big bottle. And then they sell it in the uh, drums or the pails. Right. The couple pound pail. Yeah, usually it's a five pounder. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. Yeah, if you're having a big crab boil... Then getting that five pound pail makes sense. Oh heck yeah! Yeah, especially if you've got two or three bushels of crabs for a party, well, which by you must be a lot cheaper than they are by me. I pay half a bushel. I pay uh, what the heck was it? For half a bushel. Big boys. All right, number. Wait a minute. Go back to the regulars. The number one males. Yeah. Well, yeah. Number one. Number one. Mixed size males. Okay. Uh, half a bushel is one eighty five, and a bushel's three fifty nine. Yes, yeah, they went way up. I had somebody in Delaware was getting them from. He wants four hundred for for a bushel right now. Now I'm getting large, a dozen large for eighty-four dollars. So that's what it costs me. That's crazy. But they're good. They are good. They are good. But it's just the <laughs> price. You know, you go back a couple of years ago, a bushel of crabs is two hundred, two hundred and fifty. Now it's four hundred dollars. I don't want to hear it's the price of fuel. People got used to the price being high, and they just left it high. They never brought it back down. Well, why bring it back down? They know people need gas to go here, there, everywhere. I'm not talking about the gas. When gas was over $4 a gallon, I understand why it was $400 for a bushel of crabs. Now that gas came back down to three thirty, you, know, you got to readjust the price. Well, I'm glad. Uh, see, I'm on a budget with my fuel oil company. Mm-hmm. And I just got the first, the, well, deposit taken out of my account. And uh, it actually came down this year. I was paying almost $400 a month last year for fuel. On, heating on, fuel. On, on, on that budget. Right. Yeah. That's why when propane started really going going crazy... We switched the wood-burning fireplaces over to the, the pellet stoves 
right. in order to offset the cost, almost as supplemental heat. So the, the wood pellets are, I think right now we're paying about $5 for a 40-pound bag. Really? So I, and I take three tons at a time. Now, see, now see, that's the difference between where you're at and I'm at. Any bag that I buy is going to be 15 to $30 for a 20-pound bag. Of wood pellets? Yes, sir. Oh, that's insane. Yep. And then you got to add delivery on top of that. No, I got to go pick them up. I don't, I, they don't deliver to me. Really? No. And every time it, it's, it's, I take a pallet at a time, but I order three pallets right up front, three tons. Right. Well, see, I buy them a couple bags at a time because I can go through a couple bags. Right. I, I wouldn't go through a pallet. It'd take me a while to go through a pallet. Well, for me, there's there's 50 bags to a pallet because each one's 40 pounds. So I end up with 150 bags for the season. Plus the uh, propane, it's a thousand gallon tank, but I can only fill it to 800. They only fill it 80%. Right. So with the cost of propane going from a dollar a gallon to nearly $3 a gallon now, there's got to be a way for me to offset that cost. And that's the wood pellets. Well, that's just like my fuel oil. I'll get a I'll get a ticket and it says you know so many gallon and that it was full, but yet I'll go down and look at the tank and it's only three quarters. Wow. You know, I yeah. guess air is the other. Could be you got to bleed it out. Well, see the thing is when they're putting the fuel in, that's what they listen to the whistle. Mm-hmm. And when they get a strong whistle, then that's when they stop it. You know, I definitely don't need them overfilling it to where I have a basement full of fuel. Oil. You know. Well, you do before the next nor'easter. Not Come when it's fall, all. You want to fill it? Not not when it's all over the floor. Oh, oh, it leaks out because of, of the change. Well, in, if in they the overfill it, if they overfill it, it'll leak out. Uh -huh. I mean, to be honest with you, I keep my AC, so to speak, high. Mm -hmm. And I keep my heat low. I'll sit here with a hoodie on instead of turning the thermostat up. Just to save, a, you know, a few extra pennies of uh, heat and <coughs> <coughs> Because being retired, yeah, I'm on a fixed budget. So I only get so much money per month. Well, I... I'm sort of in that position now. Things have changed in life. All right. So it's just after 10 o'clock. I got to get up at 5 in the morning for... Yeah, it's just over work. two and a half hours, sir. Yep. Yep. Hopefully... One of the things I was I'm, I'm working on is getting more watch hours in. I've yeah. been uh, fortunate with with all the different types of, of digital marketing I'm doing <laughs> to get more likes, to get more subscribers, to get more views. But what's been very difficult is getting the 4,000 watch hours I need. Because this one right. over here wants to know where a silver play button is. Right. You know they have uh, they have a place that makes uh, fake YouTube plaques. I saw that one time. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I would just like to get the certificate. I mean, I'm at. <clears throat> 170. You have 170,000 likes? No. Shoot. 
I'm lucky I can get two likes on a video. But uh, even my barbecue channel, I get views, but likes, nobody hits the like button. So since I started, I have 3,481 subscribers and 11,800 views. I've been doing this, well, I've been doing the gaming side of it for, since 2019, when I retired. October is when I started, 2019. So you figure, October this year would be four years. In those four years, I've got over 700 videos that I have done and put out. But yet I only have like 170 subscribers. Barbecue, I've got 40, I want to say. And uh, it's not that I did this to make lots of money. Money. You know? I talk to people. They're like, I make 30 cents. I, I just got a check for $5. They're, they're yeah. not talking about making money. They're offsetting what do you it realize? Do you realize how the hundreds of thousands, if not million, subscribers you have to get to make any type of substantial money yeah you you have to be in in a very elite category exactly what my my goal what i what i what i'd like to do is just find a way to offset the cost of just putting a video together Right. You know, people forget what it costs to, to go out, to buy the food, to put your time in, to do the edits. When I was doing this on my own, it, it was costly. Now that I had to bring other people in because I just, I don't know what I'm doing. So right. to bring somebody in who does the SEO work, to do the, 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 the edits, to be able to take the clips and break them down and, and do all that, that's not free. And um, I don't know anything about TikTok. And now I'm being told that I need to, to start focusing on making short videos to put on TikTok. Um, I'm being told I don't know what I'm doing on my Twitter. So I need to grow that side as well. Right. I mean, there's people out there that will, will just take you for a ride. And there's those that know the business. They know the industry. And that's what they do. They're, you know, you pay them. And they know all the, the different meta codes and things to put in, all these, these trigger words and hashtags. Now, now my barbecue videos, I edit all my own. And uh, I'll have this one, one video I did. I had like 12 different clips I had to put together. To make one video. So what I do is I go to. Uh, da Vinci. Download all the videos. Compose them into one. Then I'll go over to. Uh, Vizio. Add my. Uh intro and my outro right and then uh create a video and then on youtube i'll go into my what the heck is it called recordings mm -hmm. and upload it right so you know that's the kind of editing i do 
uh, as for the gaming, the camera's running as uh, my son and I play. So it's real time. If I get PO'd and accidentally curse, which I try to correct myself and apologize, but it's nothing bad. You know, I might say heck or darn in the other versions. Sure. Once in a while, but you know, we, I try to do a family friendly video, whether it be cooking or gaming. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I could sit there and get pretty ripe. But that's not really for me, and that's not really for, uh, you know, my community. I don't know. Maybe I have to throw a few curse words in to get a couple extra subscribers. <laughs> you know, some people like that kind of stuff. They do, but I, I don't know enough about how when anything that you put out there is transcribed, right? how the computer system picks up on that and what it's going to kick out and what it's going to allow. Well, like I say, my, my videos are made for the whole family, but I have that no kid thing checked on uh, YouTube. Sure. Uh, I've only been copyrighted one time, and that was a warning, but that was years ago. And because uh, I did some music that I wasn't supposed to. But apparently, even though your video is on private, YouTube can watch it. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyhow, every time I upload a video, I have no problems with it checking it and accepting it. Sure. I have one video on private right now. It's the unboxing of that Camp Chef. But I don't know. I was told not to touch it until a, a better description is put in and other hashtags and at symbols and all that, because when I was doing this previously, I was just, you know, firing everywhere. It wasn't well-focused. And I also didn't realize that with this computer algorithm that you can't post too often. And if you do, you need to maintain that same type of schedule where you throw off the algorithm and then it doesn't promote your videos the right way. Change the times on it. That'll screw it up, too. Yeah. But uh, I put... Steve and I, we do videos every Sunday. And I put three videos out per week. And that's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. So if I do a cooking video or something, I have Tuesday and Thursday to fill in. Or if I do a live... You know, where I just sit here and BS with everybody by myself, bringing them up to date on what's going on. That's a Tuesday or Thursday video. You know. But, uh, knock wood, I haven't had no problems. Uh, description. I put all my information in that and anything that's going on with the video, I put in the title. So when they look at the title, they see Niners family and then ground it because that's the series we're playing right now. Episode whatever. And then I go and put in different things that's in the video. Now, if I mention the word death, I get more views on that video. I guess because of that word. 
because there's times my son and I, we do die in the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get an average of uh, two to three, maybe four view, uh, views. But I put death in there. I'll be up into the teens and 20s. But I usually snicker them because the deaths are usually towards the end. <laughs> so they have to watch the whole video. Right. And like I say, they're 25, 30 minutes long. You know. I mean, if I played for 15, 20 minutes, we wouldn't get nothing done in the game. I mean, we could probably do a whole lot more. But right now, I'm three weeks in advance with games. Videos. So this weekend, we're taking off because Saturday is my son's one-year anniversary. Sure. And uh, so that'll take th three videos for that week, for the next week, out of that group of nine that I had saved up. And that's the reason we try to do that, just because of this type of stuff. You know, if I get sick, he gets sick. He's sure. got something he's got to do. You know, well, I've got three videos in reserve that I can put out. Hey, Lance. Yeah, barely. <laughs> Here you pop on, buddy, and we're ready to pop off. That's right. The only question is, where's my merchandise? Where are my aprons? Where's my towels? Where's my hats? Uh -oh. Where's my shirt? Uh -oh. Where is where are my giveaways? I can't have one race. Nothing. I have no giveaways. Well, that's where you go and uh look at this. I had a I had a cheat on Lance to go get a, a hat. It's of course it's not embroidered, it's it's silk screened. Right, but my son was asking for shirts and hats and merchandise so he could be just like every other YouTuber. So I had to get him a matching shirt. And actually, this is his hat. I have another hat. Um, just doesn't look as good on him as it does on me. So I took his hat. Yeah, Lance is a busy man, and we're about to make him bigger or busier. Yep. But. Uh... Yeah, when you do your giveaways during Lance's lives, you need to pop on and then you. tell him what you want to do and what you want to give away. That way the people can contact him. Right. That's, that's what I do, you know, for my towel. There's, there's not a lot of takers right now. But it's new. Yeah, I want to do... Uh, I want to definitely do the towel. I want to do the apron. That flag behind your head looks pretty nice, too. Did he do... Did he make that, that fire cups? Yeah, that's his, that's his banner. Well, it's not a banner because his banner, you know, people put up and it takes up a 10 by 20. Wow. You know, tent almost. Unbelievable. It's too but uh, he was running a fundraiser. And uh, so much money got you this, that, and the other. So I gave him money. Mm -hmm. He's trying to get uh, he's trying to get his business up off the ground, so to speak. I mean, right now he's 
if I could figure out how to do it, he's got a scan code because he's trying to, uh, uh, do more to his factory, I guess. Oh, so Lance is saying he did not make the fire cups flag. Anthony has those made elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. There, it's like a plastic or a vinyl flag. You know. Right, right. Yeah, they they um they print onto the vinyl. Yeah. I gotcha. And then you're talking the metal holes you talk about the grommets. Yeah. So you wanted to tie it off onto something. You know, like like Lance's towels. Of course he's got a he's got a little one right there. Yep. But uh Tigers is a little bigger. So uh I think the barbecue towels are a great idea. Yeah. Um I, I guess if I was doing if I was a business and I was doing a golf outing, I would need a whole bunch of towels and then just have them made up as golf towels. Oh heck yeah, they'd be perfect for a golf towel. Yep. You know. Fire Cups Anthony. Let's see what this says. Fire Cups Anthony has a QR code. He's wanting to be shared. Yeah, so I try. Where, where if is I he could, gonna put that? If I could figure out how to share it, Lance, I will. Or would. Anywhere. Like see, I have Instagram and we're all sharing it on Instagram. Isn't there a way that I can put that up on the screen right now? Or that you can put it up on the screen? There's a ticker tape. Let's see. So there are banners. No, no. If it's a QR code, then it's got to come up like, oh, let me see, screen layout. I think <coughs> no, it won't do it. If, if there was a way, screen layout, I could probably put it right there. I'm into everywhere I don't need to be. I'm into backgrounds, private chats, banners. You still painting that gentleman's house, Lance? Yeah, that's a good idea. Real meat stick bottle openers. That is a great idea. I got so many bottle openers and I drink out of cans. <laughs> Well, I had my son go get this can out of the refrigerator because Lewis, uh, Trumpet Master 77, this is one of his sponsors, is Paul Lander Beer. I, I noticed this a oh. couple of weeks ago. So that was the whole reason why I had this thing pulled out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So this camera that I have on here, this camera is a crazy camera. Well, really? no matter where I move, it moves with me. It's on a gimbal. And it's got AI technology. So when I take the can and I bring the can close, it'll zoom in on the can. That's true, Hojo. Yeah, see, it's uh, backwards for us. Oh, it is? It's backwards to you? Yeah. Okay. Got you. But we know what it says and all, because I can wow. read. I can read fluent backwards. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Interesting. Let's see. Is it, let's see if that. Tell me if that's still backwards. It's still backwards like this. Yep. Oh, okay. No, yeah, no, Lance. Right. Uh, I haven't forgot you about those koozies I was talking about, but they're pretty much like the ones you're making. It's just I gotta find those dang things. I got like a pack of fifty. And uh I wanted to send him some down there to 
try to put my logo on. And uh, <laughs> excuse me. I think koozies are a great idea, no matter whether you have a soda, a beer, if it's in a can, a bottle. Everything works with a koozie. Yeah, well, see, these are uh, these are already assembled. So all you got to do is, well, see, you're you're going to do it while they're unsewn. I do need a CNC machine. I don't know where to put them. I need a CNC. I don't know. Uh... Hey, MBL. Long time no see. Drinking glasses <laughs> would be great. But glasses get expensive. Oh, oh, he's saying even a drinking glass goes inside the koozie. Right, right. Not make drinking glasses. Right. But see, this is what I'm saying. Things start to add up. All these these little tchotchkes here and there. If you're just giving well, everything that, away. That's just like this I got. Dude, makes it. This is a frost buddy. Open it up. Slide your beer can down. Put the lid on. Boom. Uh, I'll be right back. I just got to run to the men's room. No. Yes, I'll be right there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll have to send them to you, Lance. To see what you could do with them pre-made. I mean, it would be a whole lot simpler. These are uh, these are sewn also. I don't know if you could go and cut the stitching so that you can make them flatten and re-sew them. Could you do that? See, there's the seam, Lance. Got it on both sides. So do you think you could split them apart and then do the logos? Okay, I'm back. Nice. So when I leave, it doesn't put my logo up for my picture? I didn't know. I was big picture. Oh, okay. I don't know what I did. See, that's just like, uh, let's see, let's go here. Uh, there. Oh, very nice. I don't know how you do that, but I like it. What's that? How'd you do that? How'd you get that to pop up behind you? Uh, you go into your settings and then it says virtual background. Gotcha. But you okay. have to download different pictures. But you see this logo here? Yes. See how many colors are involved in this?
quite a few colors. Yes. Now the new logo that Lance came up with me. Oh, okay, okay. So if I send you a couple of them to try and you slice them up, I'm going to send you, like we were talking, three of them. <clears throat> so that way you can go and uh, but at least want to get one good one out of it. You know, so if you butcher up the other ones, of course, all you got to do is let me know. I'll have, you know, all kinds. Right. But I've got, I've got pack. Okay. I've got purple, red, green, pink. I don't think I have a black one. The green is the bright green. That might be the only colors. It's like four or five different colors. <clears throat> But, uh, oh, there we go. Look yeah, but that. anyhow, anyhow, yes, my son did a, uh, did a, uh, got it. Look at that. Thank you for showing me how to do that. You're welcome, sir. Now, see, my son did a, uh, Hey, speaking of Mr. Russ, there he is. Uh, he did one to where it had that logo and my new logo side by side. Let me see. Uh, downloads. Okay, well, that didn't work. What happened, son? Oh, there we go. <coughs> there we so, go. I knew he was he was gonna come in. What's hey, up? There he is. How's it going? <laughs> I knew eventually you would make your way here. Yeah, hang on, man. I'm. I gotta close my ball. Yeah, I. Uh, I've been finishing up a video, shooting it, and I'm having to do it by myself because I'm shooting here. Hang on a second. My and, son uh, picked up anyway, last it was a week on that play button behind your head. I hadn't noticed that. He saw that immediately. He goes, "Who's the guy with the with the silver play button?" Oh yeah, right. Right there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had it about six years now, I guess. Wow. See, this is what my son did. There's a new logo. That's the one that's on the towels. And then next to it's the older logo, which my son made for me. I tell you right. what, somebody commented about this bearded butcher shirt. That was some good yep. cotton, man. It's good and thick and heavy. Yes, they and make they make good shirts. They really do. And ball boss, I got one they sent me a few years ago with a big shrimp on the back of it, and that is some of the heaviest cotton. I mean, I've I've had it for a while now, washed to death, and it still looks good. Right. I can't stand spending good money and all of a sudden you get in so thin, you know, it's like, good Lord. No one, that thing won't last no time. Well, that's just like I got Spreadshirt. 
as my uh, it does the printing on uh, my shirts, hats, whatever. Yeah. It, did that email make any sense to you, uh, Chuck? Yeah, I'm going to try try to cook it slow and slow. Yeah. Yeah, just real low heat and let it render slowly. That way, you'll get most of the fat rendered out of it. Cause now, should I should I empty the fat in during the cook, or just leave it in there? Well, just when you get through cooking it, take your bacon strips out and drain them off good. Let right. it cool down, then it gets crispy. And you want to kind of cook it more than that floppy state. You want to get it good and crispy. Then drop them in a food processor or a coffee grinder, whatever. Right. A coffee grinder would actually make it more powder. A food processor make it a little bit coarser, but it would still do fine for what you're wanting it for. I would think. What I what I was thinking about was the oily consistency of it. Yeah, that's why I said try to render out as much and then blot it as much as you can. You know. And uh, it still might have a little bit of oil. You might could look on Amazon. I'll look right now and see if they got. Hang on a second. Uh, do you ever so, order from Amazon? Many times, sir. I live yeah. off Amazon Prime. Yeah, me too. Uh, so dehydrating wouldn't do nothing. No, it needs to be cooked. Dehydrating right. is not going to cook that pork. Right. Which I'm sure you'll cook it in the. Uh, that's the problem with a freeze dryer or anything, even a dehydrator. It's hard to do anything with that fat, right. other than render it out. That's the reason I said very low, low heat, and it's gonna take a little while, you know, and uh, just let it keep going and going and going until, and it's gonna render more fat that way, you know. But right. it's, you're still not gonna get it all. Um, I figured put the onion in, in the uh, excuse me, blender and get like a puree to put, yeah. in, the, to put in the sauce. I was looking to see if, if they <coughs> even have a bacon powder already done for you, but I don't see it. Now, should I should I leave out the onion powder if I'm going to put the other onion in? Nah, that's your call there. I meant, you know, I meant really. Because I think, I think the pureed onion is going to be a lot more potent than it's the gonna, uh, powder. It's going to taste better. And I'll tell you what, dehydrated onions that are freshly dehydrated, they're going to taste better than the stuff you buy at the store because they're fresh, you know? Right, right. Now, now talk, uh, talking about you, um, you got that freeze dryer next to you. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about doing eggs. Yeah, I done did them. That's what I just finished up doing. Oh, uh, because I watched these two homesteads. One that lives kind of on grid and the other one lives off grid. But the one that kind of lives on, on grid, which means he's got electric and all that. Yeah. He. They have a bunch of chickens around to where they get a bunch of eggs mm -hmm. his freeze dryer holds four trays that's what mine does it's a medium size four trays yeah and got... uh go ahead fi 52 eggs okay Eight. well i did uh four dozen what's four dozen 48 yeah 48. i could have easily got another dozen between the four trays Really? Yeah, easily. Because they're, yeah, they're only like halfway full. You can fill it all the way up, but it's going to take longer, you know. And then and then he went after, he said, 23 hours? Yep. I went 20, about the same, about 23, 24 hours. And it was, this these machines, it comes default. When it runs, when it says it's done, <laughs> when it thinks it's done, it's got sensors in there to detect moisture and everything. Once right. it determines that it's done, then you can set it to go. It's already preset at two hours. You can set it for another 10 hours. If you're going to, if you know, you're not going to be back to 10 to it because really? what happens if you're not there to, to check it 
and I did. I used my moisture meter to make sure everything was dry. I was reading zero all, on all four trays, but yet it's reading 16% moisture on my finger, you know. Right. And um, the way I did it last week is before I got that moisture meter from Derek, I weighed them each tray and I wrote it down each tray. Then I, I put them back in there and let them go two more hours and reweight them again and nothing changed. So they were done. As long right. as that weight don't change, you're done. But the moisture meter prevents from having to go that other two hours. But anyway, that thing was getting ready to go into that two hour cycle and I turned it off so I could check it. Right. You know, release the vacuum on it. That way you can open your door, check everything. Everything was good. Went in there and pulverized it, turned it all to powder. Then I actually cooked some and uh, made an egg sandwich out of it. <laughs> yeah, he fancy. said it tasted better than uh, the regular egg. It tastes just like it to me, man. I cannot. I got my wife to try it. She's having stomach issues today. And I said, just try a piece of it. She goes, tastes just like an egg. I said, well, it is an egg, but <laughs> you would never know. Yeah. It was, you would never know it was freeze dried. It's good yeah. to let it sit there once you mix that water in. And uh, let it sit a, a good five minutes. Right. You know? He uh, he did like a dozen, a little over a dozen per tray. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Just a tad over. I went one dozen. I bought four dozen eggs, dollar seventy six a dozen, and did uh, all four of them. And you know, it's like uh, I should have said that in the video, but you know how eggs got kind of scarce here a while back and it got extremely high you know oh yeah and well you know that's liable to happen again so if you can buy them at a lower price and freeze dry them hell they're good for 25 years imagine how much it'll cost in 25 years if we're still here in 25 years yeah. you know but anyway it, it's fun to play with play around with plus it's stocking up on things you know well see he got uh, out of those four trays he got almost two quarts of uh, powder. Yeah, I had a bowl full of it, man. It's like, dang. Matter of fact, I had it in my smaller thing on my processor. And when I had two dozen in there, two trays, it filled it all the way up to the top almost. Mm -hmm. So I turned it on. When I turned it on and pulverized it into powder, it went down about half. And I was able to get all of them in there, but barely, right. you know. Right. But uh, his video came out. This this week, last week, and as soon as he started doing that, I thought about you. Yeah, uh, I don't know if any of y'all's ever had that government cheese. I call it government cheese and government eggs and powdered eggs. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, it don't taste nothing like that crap. Those are nasty, man. Go to McDonald's. There you get your government cheese and your eggs. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm happy with it, man. Real, real happy. I'm going to do grits next. And I've got powder butter over here. I said, you know, us Southerners, we got to have our grits and eggs in the morning. So How'd you do the butter? Did you melt it down? And I, then... I bought it because you can't do butter in this machine. Oh, uh, okay. It's, all, it's pure fat. But there is a process for doing it commercially. I showed it on somebody's live. Hang on a second. And I'll show you. Let me step up and get it. Yeah, any picture that you want to put up behind you as a background, uh, Dave, all you got to do is uh, click on the little plus in your settings. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, real butter. It's real butter, and I don't know how they turned it into powder, but they did, and it's good. This is only good for like two years. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, February the 9th, 2025. This won't last no 25 years. Actually, it says bet, best buy. It don't say expired. So that means it's as fresh as in. You probably squeeze five years out of this, possibly. Right. But, uh, that's what I see. I had this in my file downloads. So all you got to do is click on one and uh, add it. Right. And then boom, there you are. Yeah. 
I was reading the chat, see what they're talking about. What are they telling you? You're in the chat now. The Thor's hammer. Uh, I could probably get a couple to where I wouldn't have to buy that money, uh, that many. To like you were saying, you had to get a case. Well, if I go down to the Bronx, if I head down to the Hunts Point Market, then I can't have them fabricate like you know two or three. They're gonna say like you know you got to take a case. Um, I, most of the stuff when I go down there, I've got to buy wholesale case. Right. So sounds like sounds like you'll be get, you'll be getting your uh, bone in brisket. If I go down there, yeah, I get the. It, that's what I did beforehand. <clears throat> I told him I needed a, a a prime grade brisket, and he goes over and pulls it right off the hook. And he goes, "Here you go, Dave. Puts it in a box and goes, take it with you." Go home and go butcher it on your own, which wasn't a problem. But thinking about it now, if I went back just for that, it would be, you know, it's a it's a big ride because of the traffic. It's only 70 miles, but the traffic on an hour and a half trip is like three hours to get there and three hours to come back. My butcher go ahead. To New York. To New York is over. You need to get to the Bronx. Yeah. From where I live. Yeah, I can imagine, man. Yeah, my butcher lives about 25 minutes from me. And uh, I called and asked for uh, brisket prices. <laughs> right. <laughs> 750 a pound for a brisket. That's insane. And if I wanted it trimmed, it was 850 a pound. That's because they're going to cut off a lot of fat that you can't yeah. use anyway. I mean, I use it because I make sausage and things or render it, render it into tallow. You know, I don't throw but, it away for sure since I paid for it. But Right. Now, that was a 15-pound uh, brisket. Yeah. 750 a pound. So you go and figure, you know, do the timetable. That's $105. a lot. Of, huh? It's $105. Yeah, that's a lot of darn money. It sure is. I think, I don't know. I, you know, we all got cooking channels and that's the reason I'm doing what I'm doing now. It's like nobody's watching these Tomahawk steak. I mean, a few are watching it, but I just don't think they're, people can't afford it no more. You know what I'm saying? It's, stuff has gotten out of sight. Some people can, but your average Joe, Joe can't. I can't. I'm as average as they come. Right. But, I mean, I do it to me when I buy a brisket, it's investing into my channel and YouTube, hoping I'll get enough views to pay for the brisket at the minimum, you know, mm -hmm. and it just ain't happening anymore. I'm losing on that kind of stuff. Night, Hojo. So I'd rather go buy eight dollars worth of eggs and see how that works. So <laughs> it might yeah. do real good. Who knows? And then again, might not. So I can well, it, it, it's funny because. The trends that are uh, like everybody's doing a tomahawk. Yeah. Everybody's starting to do the uh, spatchcock uh, chicken legs. Yeah. You know, everybody's starting to do this. Everybody's starting to do that. You know, pretty soon people get tired of, I mean, that's just like brisket. How many videos can you watch somebody trim up and cook a brisket? Exactly, man. Over and over. That's the reason. I mean, no, I, offen I, no I, offense I, to the guys that do it. Yeah. But it's true, man. I did that brisket, what, four months ago? If even that, it was on that old hickory. But I called it leftover brisket because I made that brisket just to do future videos with to right. where I could try to make my money back. Let that brisket... Sure spread over three videos and possibly pay for itself and actually make some money with it, you know, but I haven't done the math on it. I don't know if I have, as far as I know it, I probably named it wrong leftover brisket and people just wasn't interested. I know it didn't get many views, you know? Right. I'd rather have just the point instead of the flat. Yeah, I've done that before. You but just do the point. Know, That's my favorite part, anyway. You, you know. could buy you could buy buy the fat anywhere, 
trying to get a point. That's a little rough. Yeah, well, the ones I've gotten has come from Porter Road and stuff like that. Those uh, those meat purveyors, they'll sell them like that, you know. Now, I have seen brisket flats around here, but I don't think I've ever seen a brisket point. Yeah. Man, my eyes keep watering. Only during St. Patrick's Day when they have them all broken down. That's when you find the flats and the points and all those pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I bought a brisket one time. This is when I made my pastrami. And I took and separated the, the point from the flat on the video. And I went ahead and started my, my cure and everything for the, for the pastrami. And then after that video, I took... No, I'm sorry. While that was curing for seven days, I took the point and did a second video. I turned it into a brisket burn-ins, you know. So I was able to get right. two videos out of that brisket. I mean, if I went and asked my butcher, I'm sure it would cost me quite a few dollars. I could probably get point off of him. Hmm. But I don't know. I, now, to, I, 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 I will check. tell you this. The point said I've got, they said brisket point. It, they didn't separate the point. All they did was cut right at uh, the end of the point, and you still had part of the flat on so there. You got, you got half the flat and the point. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. exactly. And then they go and sell the other half of flat for something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that becomes a chuck roast. If I'm only if I'm gonna buy a brisket just to like make grilled cheese sandwiches out of or or enchiladas or anything like that. That that flat's fine with me, man. It works just fine, you know. Well, see, I like my fatty meat. Oh, I do too. But yeah. I, you're gonna have so much other stuff in there. It, you know, it don't really matter. Like a grilled cheese. I did that one well, what, last year, year and a half ago, something like that, and had two types of cheese in it. I had some grilled onions on it, the brisket, and then. I took and spread a uh, thin layer of butter on the top of it, and I took those jalapenos and cut them razor thin and poked them on that on that butter, you know. Right. And then when I flipped it down, I flipped it on that side first to let it cook, and while that was cooking, I, I did the other side with cheese on on the other side. So when I flipped it over, it got that crispy like cheese on it. Plus, it had them two cheeses in the inside. It was that was good. It wouldn't have mattered if that brisket had a lot of fat in it or not. It, it had so much going on. It just really popped, you know. If I do another brisket, I think I'm going to try Joe's uh, no trim version. I've done that plenty of times. If I'm gonna cook a brisket here, that's what I do. I don't. I don't. But but the only thing, trimming. only thing I would do would be to uh I've I've that that dickle or whatever the hell you call it. Deckle, deckle fat. Yeah. yeah. That I'd have to at least cut that. Yeah. You can or it'll still cook. You just get rid of it when you're trimming it, you know. True. <laughs> you can do it both ways. But you know, then it wouldn't be a no trim brisket. Yeah. Well you know, to me, no trim means trim before. But if you if you serve it with that fat on it, more people more than likely is gonna cut it off anyway before they actually right. eat it. You know. But, well, the uh, thing about it is, once it cooks, you can always take it off. Yeah, I I've watched cooking shows not on YouTube but on TV, focusing on the I think it was diners, drive-ins, and dives. But uh, they were in some restaurant down in Texas, and they didn't trim crap, man. They serve fat and all because they get paid for it, you know? Correct. Yeah, they didn't trim all that off. Well, you know, a lot of places, they'll trim it up and not save that fat. Because they don't make sausage and all. Yeah, exactly. You know? Depends on which restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Some probably do and some probably don't. I mean, like Joe, <laughs> I'd love to see his freezer how much you know, brisket fat he's got in there. Yeah. 
I just threw a bunch out the other day. I was trying to make room, and there was stuff in there four years old. I mean, that's going, that's going, that's going. Yeah. I haven't made sausage in a while. I made boudin quite a bit since some that sausage uh, series, but I'll get back around to it eventually. Now, Dave and I were talking earlier, and uh, I was telling him I watched this one video where this guy took all the uh, fat trimmings that uh, he had and uh, ground it up. So instead of having all these different bags of trimmings, he basically had one bag of ground fat, and then he could go and make tallow out of it. That's and a smart it, idea. Apparently, the ground up fat, the tallow, it, it renders a lot easier. But it renders easier because now you got it in little bitty pieces. It's kind of like taking a, a chuck roast or pork butt, let's say, and butterfly and it laying it open it's going to cook a lot faster that way because right, right. you know it's, it's a lot thinner now it's long but it's being subjected to the same heat it'll cook a lot faster that way if you're well, making pulled pork or whatever yeah that's not a bad idea i have to remember that even though my grinder and everything's over in alabama at my son's house well see i went on amazon and i got a cheap little grinder i don't even know what that what size it is just for that. Yeah. I mean, I figured if I'm going to grind up fat, I don't need no great big expensive grinder. Now you probably got a number eight. Those are the ones I had one. I bought way back on my channel. I bought it at Academy right up there. I think I paid $79 for that grinder. It lasted a couple of years. And the next time I bought one, I bought me a better one. Is the number twelve? But I like to have what is the biggest? A thirty-two, I think. Right. You know, but I don't. It don't matter. Twelve and it works good. You watch some of the videos. It's spitting that meat out. Biggest thing is keeping your blade and your, your not. You know, your knife, your blade. Sharp. Yeah, and your your uh, die. He dies. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think this was. Uh, I think I got it for like forty, fifty dollars. It wasn't expensive oh, at all. Oh, shoot. Yeah, that ain't bad. They'll do it. If you just don't do it every now and then, that's the way I'd go. You know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, for one, <laughs> I don't have room for all this stuff I got. It takes up room. Good Lord. And uh, in the kitchen, I'm looking at it. I've got this wall that when I do my cooks, it's behind me. Basically, it, the doorbell was the only thing on it, mm -hmm. which I don't have anymore. I've got those little battery-operated ding-dongs. My doorbell dings over my phone. It's part of my It's a security camera. Right. Ding so uh, I'm, I, I'm thinking about putting some cabinets up there because I need room. I mean, I've got my mom's slicer, that big butt meat slicer, 10-inch yeah. I got. That's what I got, a 10-inch. Uh, that little grinder I bought. I got an ice maker. Mm -hmm. I got a deep fryer, which I'm not really using now, so I need to go and put that someplace. We got a spare bedroom, so a lot of my overflow that's not over at Derek's ends up in there. And I that, got two, that, I got two spare bedrooms. <laughs> that that shelf you see over here to my uh my right, right. That thing I I got to organize that. It's slap full of cooking utensils, all kinds of stuff, man. But uh, I was talking about this one night, but never showed it. Watching Eric at two guys in a cooler because I was gonna do like some dry cured sausages and stuff. I've yet to even use this thing. I've had it for probably over a year, but that's that pH tester. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brand spanking new. I got, uh, when we had aquariums, we didn't have something elaborate like that, but we had small to where we had to go and check the pH and all that. Yeah, I, I used to uh, do maintenance on swimming pools for, like, uh, hotels and everything. And, you know, you'd have to check the pH. But that was done, like, in these little 
plastic testers and you put yeah. water and you put a few drops of this and turn a certain color and this, that, and the other. That's how we read yeah, that. Yeah, then you go and take the grid on the back of the box and match it up. This one here has got a little probe. You actually put it into like the meat or whatever to read the uh, pH. On it. Yeah. Who was that here a while back talking about the pH on, on pork? You know, I can't remember what the conversation was. And I was asking, I said, well, what are you looking for? Like high acidity, low what, you know? And I can't remember that either. That's been six months ago or better, but never thought about the pH of an animal, the meat, right, the cut, right. to determine if it's better cut or not. Dave. Yes, sir. Where's T2 at? T2? What's T2? Tester 2. Oh, taste tester number two went upstairs to bed. His uh, uh, his mother, uh, mother meat stick, came and got him uh, because. I was saying, you look like you need another beer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he he went upstairs at about ten o'clock. Um, he's got camp tomorrow. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, even for me, I got to be up at five in the morning. To oh get crap! Over to it's work. eleven o'clock there. You better I get know. off there. Hey, well, you got six hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said another shared interest. I'll service soon. Left installation. Oh, okay. Yeah, I used to vacuum them. I'd balance them out, shock them, whatever it needed. Used to be pretty good at it back in the day. That was back in the 80s, man. That was a long time ago. Yeah, we had a, uh, out here on the patio, we had a little uh, four foot by 15, 18 foot. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it took two days, excuse me, it took two days garden hose to fill it up. But uh, we had a, a little hose. That going and now I got hiccups and burps. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, we used to go and uh, hook his hose up to the filter and we would vacuum the floor. And of course, we had our strainer to get the stuff floating. Yeah. But, yep. uh, we I had, had uh, the pools I maintain. I actually did one of them because we was filling it up with a water hose. I said, man. I said, this thing's been dogged off. This had water uh, piped into it at one time to the PVC. Right. And I, I found it, and I re-ran PVC to it with a valve. Where all we had to do is turn on the water right there on some of the PVC on the pump when it got low on water just to add some to it, you know. We had this one pool. It, it was leaking bad. And to find out that's where it was leaking was around that strainer basket. Uh. And... Um, you just couldn't keep enough water in it, you know, to get down below there, then sucking air. Yeah, we had uh, we had a little basket that floated around. We throw a chlorine tablet in there. Yep. You know, and it was slowly dissolved, but it kept the water clear. Yeah, a lot of them's got the tablets for like a chlorinator. You fill it. Yeah. Pour, you know, and it just slowly adds it. Pools down here in this heat like we're having now, man, you go through some chlorine. Now, see, Marilyn, it was illegal because a pool that size, we had to have at least a four-foot fence around it. Oh, that's here, too. Yeah. And it was on my backyard. Nobody could see it. Yeah. No, the heck with it. Yeah, they do that in case some little small kid comes out let's say an apartment or a house and jumps in there can't swim and drowns they're gonna hold that property owner responsible because he didn't have any kind of fence to stop a toddler from just walking over there and right. jumping in you know that's all that's about now uh the pool that we had it was a collapsible side oh, okay so it was the, above the ground yeah so, yeah, you probably wouldn't have to worry about that, you know. Other so, than... so, so the water would, you know, keep yeah. it. Yeah, we had a liner. Yeah, and, and we had a German Shepherd, <laughs> old bear. He figured how to bend the side down 
and hop in. <laughs> and he swam and swam and swam. I, I went over to him and I went to pick him up. He growled at me. Oh, boy. Leave me alone. I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, I used to do apartment and hotel maintenance <clears throat> when I wasn't welding during layoffs and stuff like that. I was a maintenance supervisor at one complex, and we had two pools. That's the one that had a leak in the where the strainer basket is. It had right, uh, four, right. four strainer baskets, one at each corner, and one of them I finally found that thing, and I ended up having to rent jackhammers and bust all that concrete up and oh, get that Lord. out of there. Yeah, that pool was shut down a few days. Then had to re-pour concrete in there. Oh, so you had to actually drain the water out? At least below that that area, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's got a pump out. You know, a, a real pool does. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You can turn that valve a certain way, and it, it'll pump it out to the grass. And that's how you can drain them. You know. Yeah, we well, see the uh, filter on this one. We could go and hook the hoses up backwards, and then yeah. to, to drain it, it would, uh, you know suck it out yeah when i got ready to vacuum i would i would put my pole and my vacuum head in there and have that long hose i would take that hose and where the jet is where the water's coming out i would right. take that hose and put over that jet and it'd fill that hose for me full of water then go into the strainer basket you you take that basket out and you just stab it right in that hole you're vacuuming you know that's how i did it <laughs> Go to the next one, Dave. Hey, Forrest, I know all there is to know about the pool business. <laughs> Nobody caught that. <laughs> you see what Lance said? I see that. So did any of your exes make you their pool boy? No, but there was a lot of them used to flirt with me back in the day that wasn't my wife. That's when I was young, man. I was like young 30s. You was a beefy, good-looking guy. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but they liked it. <laughs> I don't know. I've seen some of your pictures when you were a younger kid. Yeah. Bad problem was a lot of them women were married. They'd go lay out the pool all day and yes, work. but were they happy? Work with the maintenance man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's why I always ask. Oh, well, I'm married. I say, yeah, but are you happy? I was married, <laughs> but I, I, I was married, so I didn't even go there. But it, it was kind of funny, you know. <clears throat> but. Uh... Well, Dave, we're three forty-three in. Yep, it's a ten after eleven. I stayed for an hour and ten minutes more than from the last time when I was like, "Okay, we're going to start to shut it down." It's been yeah. an hour and ten yeah. minutes since then. That last one I did a couple of weeks ago, I intended on going like an hour or two at the most. You don't even want to know how long that live was. Six hours. Eleven hours later. 11 hours. Oh, we got toe up, man. I ain't lying. <laughs> oh, is that the one where you got shit faced? Yeah, man. We was up to 4 a.m. I'm like, holy crap. I, I, I didn't even want to move the next day. I felt so bad. I wow. was I was watching. I didn't inter interact or anything. but uh... Yeah, there's been a few people asking, has anybody heard from Chuck? I figured you was laying in the grass there, just listening in. <laughs> yeah, I uh, all, all the lives like Simon's, yours, a couple others. You know, I'll sit there and watch and give them the view and the likes. Yeah, Dave, he was so damn lonely tonight, and he was ready to hop <laughs> off after a half hour. I figured yeah. I'd, I'd come out and uh help him out yeah it was it was going sideways real quick after about a half hour nobody joining in 
and I'm just talking to myself and talking and talking and talking. And, and like, you figure you had some people in the chat that you figured would jump on, like sure. Kent, Kent. But Randy and Al, they said they couldn't. You'll get but, more, man. It takes a little while to get yourself established. And once you do, you know, it is, you'll get people in there more and more as you go. Well, this is only the second chat. I'm getting more yeah. comfortable being on here, but after a half hour of looking at myself and talking to myself, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's difficult. But then again, the other side to that can be what happens when there's a hundred people that are all chatting at the same time and you're trying to keep up with that. Yeah, that's true. Plus Monday may have an opening slot. Well, that if that's Randy's slot, that seems like it's now been taken by uh, Lep TV. I don't know if it's really open or not. Yeah, Lep's kind of got out of the uh, Sunday routine. Yeah, I don't know. I probably won't do another live for a while, man. I was pretty disgusted over that one. Somebody told me at one point I had like 50 or 60 people in there. Wow. And that's nothing, though, man. I mean, it's like, but most of the night it was like 20 people averaging. It was like, good gracious. That's not even worth it. It was worth it that night. Quentin Nelson, man, he just kept doing super chat after super chat. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I made some money with it anyway. Poor Quint. You know, you got to love the man. Oh, yeah, man. He's, boy, he's very giving when it comes to that. Rick is moving to Thursdays. It's possible RXTX is moving down. Going on earlier, maybe you'll have to ask him. Well, I, to be honest with you, Dave, right now, Thursday looks pretty good. Yeah, I yeah. think Thursday is is either Wednesday or Thursday, but Thursday seems like a a better a better time. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know of anybody else that goes on Thursdays that I watch. But I mean, Mike Brown, he pops He's on in Friday. Yeah, but that's very very rarely. I wouldn't worry about it too much, and the reason I'm saying that, and, unless you really know these channels and follow them and stuff. There's a, there's somebody going live just about any time of any given day, you know, so yeah. just find you a yep. spot and stick to it and people eventually gravitate to it. You know, you'll get your own followers. Some of the, some of them. I mean, Randy, be... you know, I. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, Randy is still doing eight, but he's working a 13 hour shift. So he's just on a temporary hiatus. Yeah. You know, I check his uh, site and everything to see if. Uh... Well, Joe used to go religiously on Wednesdays, but I noticed he's starting to take more and more of them off. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. I think the past month he's only done one live. As far as I know, yeah. And that was what, last week? No, it was two, three, uh, three weeks ago. He, <laughs> did, he didn't do one this yesterday and he didn't do one the week before because somebody else went live and who was it and he said something then he said he was joking so that's two <laughs> weeks ago. he done one the week before that three weeks ago no randy we're still keeping your spot so you ain't getting out that damn or, uh, easy fuck it i just joined a whatever <laughs> that's it i invited you to join me but you're too busy with work playing with your chemicals he's got a chemistry <laughs> set and if it rains and there's thunder and lightning you think work is canceled well the thing about randy is you you've got to respect what he's doing right now he's doing some dangerous crap right so i can understand what's going on and brother you know you always knew I respected you and loved you and Christy. Even though I haven't been around to show it. But uh, I do want you to stay safe, bro. I 
I don't know what he does, but I went over to Tractor Supply to try to find some overalls. But unfortunately, he's an they didn't inspector. Have a... Yeah, he's well, an inspector. Well, yeah. the inspector. Okay. And right now they're inspecting some stuff that. What comment, Lance? Mm -hmm. If you're talking about me, Lance, believe me, I'm lurking. I don't always. I might be in the middle of a big old movie, you know, a good movie or something. I'm like, eh, I'll catch him later. You know, I just, that happens a lot, actually. Really? He's right above your last comment. Oh, wow. Right. I just got a PS seasoning order. That's the first one in freaking months. I earned $2.50. That's unusual. It's unusual for this time of year because most of my stuff is sausage related. I don't even think about making sausage till it gets cold. Not all of it. Some of it's seasoning related, you know. So what do they ship you seasoning to promote or you ordered seasoning? When they first reached out to me, they was wanting me to use their seasoning. So I went and looked at their website. Hang on. And I seen where they had these little uh, uh, pro smoker smokers for sausage. That's something I had always wanted. I still love that when they're supposed to be sending me a new one this month or next month. But at any rate, I said, look, I said, here's the deal. I said, I want that smoker. At that time, it sold for $1,800. Now it's like $2,400, $2,500 for that same smoker. And I said, I will do this. I said, you send me the smoker. I'll do a sausage series for two or three months. And then after that, I will use all your rubs that you send me in videos only. You, you, I'll show no other seasonings for one year, you know. And uh, don't you ain't got to pay me a dime. Just give me the smoker because that's that's what it would cost me to buy it, you know. To so I thought that's plus I'm getting all my seasonings, you know. They got really good stuff. That's how I, I did it. And they still send me stuff when they come out with a new product. I get it, you know. But I'm gonna fill it too. So, you know, I make, I tell you what, there was a year before last when it got around October, November, December, every week they were, you got to have a $100 threshold to get paid from them. When you hit a hundred, they'll put it in your bank account. Well, I did it every week for like three months. I was getting a hundred dollars. I'm like, holy crap. And then, uh, after the, after that, it just kind of died off. And last year, I think I got one hundred dollars the whole season, and you know it's just it slowed way down. But I haven't really done much videos for them in a while. You know, I fulfilled mm -hmm. my obligation. But when I get to smoker, I'll have to get back into some of that stuff. Randy, for some reason, YouTube's not putting that comment up. It's putting everything else up, but the uh, effort comment is really? not coming up on YouTube. Oh, I, they're, they're really monitoring that now. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it here in StreamYard, but I can't see it on YouTube. That's YouTube uh, going against your your freedom of speech, man. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. The First Amendment. They're censoring you. I mean, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have any uh, restrictions on your YouTube, right, Dave? I no, think I don't have any restrictions, and I turned that other thing off. What was it called? The uh, Nightbot? Yeah, I went into Nightbot. I have it open right now, and I, I told it, like, all those spam protections to shut them all down. I think that's what happened on my live, man. There was a bunch of words being going around. I even I even said some things that right after I said it. I'm like, God, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> pertaining to gun not a gun but pertaining to and i was joking it was strictly a joke and man i i could have got throttled down you know just i'm like i ain't doing this no more really yeah you gotta be careful <laughs> testing testing <laughs> that's hilarious Oh, man. That's such a common word nowadays. 
people throw it around like nothing. You you would think YouTube would have no problem with it. Do now, y'all, do y'all happen to watch or listen to uh, Tucker? Uh, what's his name? Tucker the one Carlson. That, yeah, Tucker Carlson. Y'all ever have y'all been watching him since he's been with Elon Musk? Yes. They they block out YouTube ain't doing it. Their editor is blocking out words like war or death or anything like that. I was, it, it's, it's in the captions. You can read it, but you don't hear it coming out of his mouth. They censor the heck out of him, and I know it's just because they understand what what you know what YouTube likes and don't like. It can hurt you in the long run. You sling that stuff around too much, they just like the heck with you, man. You ain't gonna grow nowhere. All right, Lance. I don't even see your comment. So anything that has to do with uh, effort is not coming up in YouTube. That's something new right there, I think. Everything else is showing up but that. Huh. Yeah. Don't surprise me, man. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I mean, I kind of get it from YouTube's standpoint, and the reason I say that, it's not that they're against that word necessarily, but like on a video especially, you know, you're not going to be able to get your video monetized because advertisers pay good money hoping people watch your video and see their ad, and they don't, they don't want you talking like that because then they get hammered like, oh, well, this, this company here, Coca-Cola, they're on this channel that's just cussing like a sailor, you know? Right. Remember here a few years ago, there was a big thing that come out. I think it was a Washington post or, or one of them papers news. And, uh, it kind of scared me. I'm like, Oh crap. There goes the money and the monetization, everything else. But they made all these things, make it, friendly you know is and that's that's when it started you had to tell if your video was for uh kids or not you know you got to check no unless it is for kids all that is what stemmed from that probably about what three or four years ago so i kind of get it actually i do get it you know All right, buddy. I'm going to hop off here. Yeah, me too. Let yep. you get some sleep, man. It's I'm late. With you. That way you can get at least a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, I jumped in earlier, but I was busy. So anyway, I seen you on here. I thought I'd jump in for a little bit. I that's, appreciate it. That's no problem, sir. So uh, you all take care, Dave, Mr. Russ. Yeah, man. Chat. Nice uh, chatting with you. So I'll see you all next one, I guess. What is today? Thursday? Yes, sir. Thursday. Okay, I got to get up in the morning and get in editing mode to edit this video and try to get it out tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. All right, guys. Y'all have a good one. Um, you as well. Thank you for joining me, everybody. Yeah. No problem, sir. Have I'm a good night. We'll see you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.